going to run. He's to the 15. He's going to tear it to the 5. Touchdown, Charlie Ward! The Seminoles are going to salute their first ever conference championship. The Florida State Seminoles have dominated the ACC since joining the league 14 years ago. The Seminoles are the champions of the ACC again. This season, the Knolls have been lighting up the scoreboard. Drew Weatherford arrived at Tallahassee with a rocket-fueled right arm, while freshman sensation Greg Carr is a touchdown machine. Win today, and they're in the first ever ACC title game. Standing in their way, an old nemesis, Chuck Amato, and the North Carolina State Wolfpack have tasted victory here before. The Knolls and the Pack, a trip to Jacksonville on the line. Coming up next on ABC Sports. Bobby Bob, thank you very much. And there is his football team, the Florida State Seminoles, here in Tallahassee at home. It is their final home game of the year. It is also senior day. So the 82,000 on hand, not only for all of these players, but the seniors in particular. We welcome you as our coverage of college football has NC State, the Wolfpack, one and four in the ACC, Florida State five and one. And for Florida State, another chance to move on yet one more time. If they can win this game, they will go six and one, and they will guarantee themselves a shot in the first ever ACC championship game. NC State, they just want to be a spoiler. Tonight at 7.45 in the other division, Virginia Tech and Miami will play one another, and that game may very well decide which team in the Coastal will move on to that championship game. With Tim Brad, I'm Gary Thorne. Welcome, everybody. Delighted to have you with us. We take a look at a Florida State team that has had a transition year in a lot of ways, and very successfully so, starting at quarterback. Well, we're talking about all freshmen, and Drew Weatherford, who you're talking about, he's the golden boy right now in Tallahassee. As a matter of fact, he continues to get better in every phase of the game. He's reading defenses and, consequently, leads the ACC in passing and in total offense. All the players respect him. They like him. He is the guy, and he has it. We talk about a Wolfpack team that thought they did not have a controversy when it came to quarterback, but two weeks ago they decided, well, in fact we do, and they've made a change. Well, another freshman, Marcus Stone, he made his first start last, last week for NC State. He's a guy, you know all that pre-snap stuff we just talked about? He just wants to get the snap count. But when he's confident, he is capable. Parade High School All-American, he's 6'4", 230, in high school, 5,100 yards and 50 touchdowns. And he's got another freshman behind him, a guy who exploded last week. There he is, Andre Brown, freshman running back, 248 yards against Southern Miss a week ago. He's the second true freshman to start a tailback this year for the Wolfpack. Brown was a high school player of the year in the state of North Carolina. You see his nifty moves. He's 6 feet, 232 pounder. It's going to be fun to watch all these young guys this afternoon. And that's why, for Florida State in particular, they're not quite sure what they're going to see in this game because you have young players who have an opportunity to prove themselves. These fans are hoping for the Seminoles. This is the day they wrap up a chance to play in that ACC championship game. We'll see coming up. Welcome back to Tallahassee, everybody. Let's get down field side. Susie Schuster. Gary, for 18 years, Chuck Amato stood alongside Bobby Bowden here at FSU coaching the defense. The two were so close, they talked once a week on the phone. Bobby Bowden told me recently that Amato had confided in him about the problems he's been having recently at NC State with his team slide. Bobby told me he told him exactly what Bear Bryant told him as a young coach of West Virginia. He said, don't listen to the court of public opinion, and Amato has taken that advice. Amato told me just before the game, it means so much to have someone who can soothe you. Bobby Bowden always says the right thing. Gary? Susie, they are so close yet today, obviously. It's about winning this football game. And Amato's had success here, the only ACC team to beat Florida here in Tallahassee. Florida State won the toss. They have deferred. NC will receive. That goes out of bounds right down at the goal line, about the one-yard line. And that's how we will start this one. Big so, mistake to start the game. Yeah. Got a legal procedure call coming up on Florida State. Bring it out to the 35, kick the ball out of bounds. NC State will have great field position to start the game. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. We'll award the ball at the 35-yard line. First down. So let's meet the quarterback who gets the start. Marcus Stone, Bishop McDevitt High School, Stilton, Pennsylvania. I'm making my second career start today. 
and some excited about it. We'll see how he does. Andre Brown making his first start is the lone player in the backfield for the Wolfpack. Into the pocket, going deep out of the 40-yard line. Got his receiver turned around as he went for Brian Clark and R.J. Bryant on the coverage. Well, obviously they're going to toss it. Starting lineups presented by Crestor. You take a look at Andre Brown. He is making his first start. He has earned the right after a great game last week. We'll see whether or not he can go back to back in that regard. This is going to be a test of a line. Three are married. Can you believe that in that NC State Wolfpack line? Three married players. You don't see that very often. So they've got family watching. Williams and Hill, two tight ends, are now in there. On the handoff, Brown gets away up to the 40. Cuts back to midfield. He'll go into Florida State territory. He's down to the 20. Going for the touchdown. He's already as good as last week. TD. 65 yards. Just talked about him. Six feet, 232 pounds. High school player of the year in North Carolina. Watch him explode and break this first level tackle. And it's A.J. Nicholson who came and overran the play and missed him. The safety couldn't stop him. And Brown just explodes. Pat Watkins ran by him. How about the speed, how big he is? Coaches say, hey, reminds me of Herschel Walker. Looked like it there. What a start for the Wolfpack. The extra, extra point kick is up and good. It took 17 seconds. Deraney makes the extra point. Brown goes 65 yards on the touchdown. NC State is the only school in this conference to have beaten the Knowles three times. They've split the last four games. Chuck Amato and his team not intimidated to come to Doak Campbell Stadium and play the Seminoles. And these freshmen, I think, are too young to even be scared. They're saying, what are you talking about? Let's just play football. Andre Brown with a huge explosion. But look at 54 Nicholson. Butkus Award guy overran the play. Then here comes Watkins. Here's your other safety. Here's Carter the corner. 15 misses the tackle. And the explosion of Andre Brown, the speed for a guy that big, immediately you start saying, he looks NFL caliber. Tremaine Hall, number 21, with a key block right there. There is Andre Brown. A chance to meet a young man who you're going to be hearing a lot about, apparently, after what he's done. He's only 19 years old, and he had an offer from Florida State to come here to play football, made the decision to go in the other direction. Bobby Bowden right now wishes that had not been the case. Well, both of these teams have a lot of freshmen that are just developing. That's why I think NC State fans have to be a lot more patient with Chuck Amata. He has a lot of talent, starting with Marcus Stone and Andre Brown, not to mention Darrell Blackman. Willie Reed, Kenny O'Neill are back deep. That ball's going to get bobbled at the six-yard line. And we'll get it back out to the 15. So the first special team effort is a good one as O'Neill gets taken down as he could not handle that cleanly. Now we'll see one of the youngsters we are talking about at quarterback for Florida State. Drew Weatherford, Minor Lakes High School, Minor Lakes, Florida. And I lead the ACC in total offense. And he is really good. Now, with all that we've just said, there's a lot of football to get to be played. <laughs> and Florida State's playing for a championship. It is Lorenzo Booker and James Coleman in the backfield. They send the receiver in motion. That's Davis the other way. Into the pocket. Big rush. That's how you handle a rush. Up to the 20, 25, 30, and down to the 35-yard line. A 19-yard gain. Garland Heath. Got into that backfield, but Booker was all by himself. Let's check in with John Saunders. John. Well, Gary, want to show you this from the Tour Championship. Just as we went off the air, that's your leader, Bart Bryant. Birdies the 18th hole to go to 14 under. Three-stroke lead over Latif Goosen. Tiger Woods is four strokes back. Gary. John, thank you very much. Timmy was hoping you were going to bring us an update. We were looking for the leaderboard. No question about it. Tiger's still very much in the hunt. <laughs> All right, Florida State. These scripted plays expecting the blitz to come from the Wolfpack, and that's exactly what happened. So they just flip it out to the side, and away they went. 
Booker's in the backfield to make the start today, his first start of the season. He'll carry that one straight ahead. And we'll gain a couple on that. Take a look at the starting lineups presented by Crestor. You see Booker is going to be in the backfield because Leon Washington is out with an injury, so he gets the start. He'll be called on a lot today. This offensive line is a good one. Castillo's their offensive captain, looking to go to med school. Obviously excited as a senior final game to be played here at home. With more to come. Going to showcase a lot of freshmen today. We haven't seen Anton Smith, the freshman running back for Florida State yet. Second down and eight. Again, straight ahead. That'll be carried up to the 40-yard line. Booker, while he's not started this year, has played a lot. So it's not as though you've got somebody in there who doesn't have a lot of game experience, because indeed he does. Take a look at this offensive line of the Wolfpack, a matchup defensive line, rather, with Manny Lawson, a leading punt blocker in his career with seven, may get a chance today. Tulloch, magnificent tackler. He has led this team every game as far as tackles are concerned. These backs will be tested. We'll see Marcus Hudson probably have the coverage of another youngster for Florida State who's going to get a lot of chances on the offensive end of it. Third down and five here out of the shotgun. Looking over the middle, little pushing from behind or not. No call. No, no call. Good coverage. That is Marcus Hudson. That's a matchup that we were just talking about as he's going to be challenged today, both deep and across the middle for Florida receivers. Hudson top of right here is number one. He is a senior. He started six games last year as a safety, but they said, wait a minute, the guy's a good cover guy, the best cover guy we have. Let's put him out there. And he's been uh, spectacular in that spot, made a nice play there. He will probably go up a lot against Greg Carr, who has had uh, nine touchdown receptions this season. Good job by the defense of NC State. They will force the punt, which will come back from the 30-yard line. Blackman is there, 25-30. Got a little room near side, 40. Great return as he gets it up to the 42-yard line. Nice job on the return by Blackman. They'll have good field position again. B.J. Dean drove him out. When we come back, Brown has scored the touchdown. An offensive weapon recently found back on the field. Bobby Bowden Field at Dope Campbell Stadium. Aerial coverage courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship. Blue and Onion 1. The Outback Steakhouse Airship specializes college football, PGA golf coverage. Look for the Bloom and Onion 1 at sports events throughout the year. Have a great day up there, guys. And what a great start down here. Brown is in the backfield, scored that touchdown. He's now got three. And this is the first start he's ever had way back in the backfield. There he is. They love to give him a running start just to, because he's got such great legs. Once he gets pumping, it's real tough to make the tackle. Buster Davis did there. And let's take a look defensively. As Florida State now realizes what they uh, may very well be up against here in this game. This front four, they're outstanding. Wembley, magnificent performer tackling-wise and in the backfield on sacks. You've got two here in Sims and Nicholson who are finalists for the Butkus Award for the linebacker, best in the country. And how much testing here? Well, Tony Carter's got a bad shoulder. We'll play as much as he can. We'll see. Second down and eight. Looking deep out of the pocket, gets a rush, a lot of room to run. Marcus Stone, he'll throw it on the fly, and that'll be out of bounds at the 40-yard line. You know, one thing, Gary, that has to really happen in this first half is NC State has to protect the football. I mean, the Wolfpack in the last seven games has 11 interceptions and nine fumbles in seven games. And then you've got Florida State on the other side, which forces you to turn the ball over. They've got 18 turnovers in the last seven, five games. So, I mean, this is something that NC State has to do. It's a young football team. You're in a tough environment. You want to make sure you don't turn the ball over. NC State's a minus eight in the turnover margin, which is dead last in the ACC. A third down and eight. Three receivers split. Again, fake up the middle. Again, Stone's got a lot of room. Doesn't want to run it. Guns it. Dangerous pass. It'll be incomplete at the 50. Good coverage by Tony Carter. Bad left shoulder, but he got in on that one. Almost like Tony Carter was baiting him. He kind of sayed off of him. Then watch 15, top of your screen. He'll bait him. He'll bait him. Good coverage here. All of a sudden, the scramble starts. And now watch the break on the football by 15 to knock it away with his left hand. That's played as well as you can play as a corner. That'll bring up a punting situation. Duraney back there. He does all of their kicking. Willie Reed is back to receive for Florida State. Duraney puts one high in the air, averages 41 yards a kick. That'll be taken at the 21, and hello! 
A little Texas hog tying going on right there. If he'd had rope, he could have wrapped Time up. Time champ. Wrapped up and tied. Oh, oh, my. Garland Heath moved in to put the hand on him. NC State has got the early lead. Weatherford, the young quarterback, who's had a magnificent year, likes to go to the air. He's coming back out. College football at ABC Sports brought to you by Singular, raising the bar. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. And Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. What a great scene here, Doe Campbell Stadium. Hey, Florida State has started from its own 15, now the 19. So NC State starting really well in every phase of the game. Got them backed up. Carr has come in. The young receiver, number 89. Three receivers are in to start this. Drew Weatherford, the 20-year-old quarterback. Working out of the shotgun will run the reverse. Booker, there goes a flag. Booker to the 30 and down to the 30, up to the 36-yard line, but a flag behind the play, a 17-yard gain. Yeah, we'll bring it back. It's going to be holding against Florida State. They know it and are already walking back. I think David Overmeyer, number 79, got caught trying to create uh, some slant tackles there so that they could open the hole up. Coming back from that left side, and as a result, held, I think, in order to create that hole. Hey! Two fouls on the play. Holding, 68. Holding, holding. 79. 79. Accepted one penalty, 10 yards. Repeat first down. So you were right with Overmeyer, and Claude got caught as well. Made it look like it was going to be an option out of the shotgun, which they love to run, and they brought it back inside, almost like an inside reverse. Watch this. They come at you. There's the inside reverse with Booker and 79. Top of your screen. That's Overmeyer. And he's got a handful of cloth. <laughs> so take your pick, throw your flag, and anything you want. Hey, let me show you something. These guys right here, that defensive line was picked by several publications as the best defensive line in the nation. And Bobby Bowden told us, Tim, he thinks it may be the best front four that they've faced all year. I mean, this defense of NC State is tough. Booker on the carry, and he's not going to go very far. That's a tough way to run. Tank Taylor. That's why they're so good. Moved in to put the hit on. Let's check in again with John Saunders. John. Well, Gary, the Taco Bell update. As you know, Florida State trying to win that game and clinch a trip to the ACC championship. Well, they can lose the rest of the way and still go. They got some help today because North Carolina beats Boston College. That's Wallace Wright running this kickoff return on the opening kickoff back 90 yards. BC loses, so Florida State is in. Yeah, but don't tell them that, John. Yeah. Bobby Bowden wants them to win here this yeah. afternoon. No gain last play, second down and nine. Big time rush completed at the 12 out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Good pass under pressure that time. Matt Henshaw, 14th reception he's had, and Demario Presley put the heat on. You know, this defense all year has been underachieving, and today they come out and they look like the defense of old, like the number one defense in the nation, which they were a year ago. A lot of different guys, a lot of young guys playing, but, I mean, they're just flying around. That was a big-time hit. Tight ends this year have been important for this Florida State offense and you saw one getting used again there 19 receptions the most tight ends have had in three years here drew weatherford moves back out of the shotgun on the third down long yardage he's got some room but not enough to run big chase on and he's going to go down boy they do pursue ronaldo moses who comes in on the passing situations the nickel and a sack for a loss of four yards that's his third sack of the year i'm surprised that weatherford allowed this they were in a soft zone Actually, with dime package in there, he starts running, never does feel Moses. Here comes big old 96 chasing him down from behind, and Moses, who's 6'5", 222, gets his third sack of the year. So they put him down, and that's going to force a punt from the end zone. Chris Hall in to do the kicking, averaging about 37 yards a punt. See whether or not we get a rush. That's a, that's a mental mistake by Weatherford. Blackman is the lone back for the Wolfpack at the 40-yard line, but he was running backwards, gets a block to the 45, trying to find his room, slips and goes down at the 45-yard line. Church helping out on the coverage. And it'll be another great field position coming up here. 47-yard part, a four-yard return, but again near midfield for the Wolfpack. Quarterback Marcus Stone making his second start last year. Seven games played, took 114 snaps last season. 
Moved into the starter's role last week. Marcus Stone with Brown behind him. We got that touchdown run 17 seconds into the game. Not this time. The Seminoles reading. Bunkley leading the charge. Three others with him. There's a senior who wants to celebrate with a big game. The final one here at home for these seniors for Florida State. Yeah, the offensive line trying to zone block, and they just didn't, uh, gosh, I mean, there was no blocking that time. Saw Morris give it kind of a how-do-you-do block, and Herndon and McKeon also. That's the 28th sack, sixth best in the nation for this Florida State defense. Loss of four, a second down and 14. Stone with a slot to the left side. Brown on the carry, and they read him. After that first run, the Seminoles saying no more as Wembley put the head on. They tried to pull the guard. They did pull the guard. Wembley just jumped off his hip, followed him right through. You're going to open up the gate. You got to close it in a hurry. That's great penetration. And look at Nicholson, who missed that tackle earlier. 54 coming in with an assist. Let's get down to Susie Schuster. Susie. Well, Gary, this pressure because Kevin Steele, the linebacker's coach, telling his guys to bring the pressure on the quarterback now. But he did tell them, be subtle. Don't let them know from where you're coming. Well, they'll probably bring it here. Third down and 17 yards to go. The prevent defense with only three down for Florida State. Two receivers to the near side. Pretty good rush. Little screen whipped out to Brown to the 40. He's hit from behind to the 45-yard line near the original line of scrimmage for Andre Brown. You know, you're going to see a lot of that, Gary, not only in long passing situations, but because they're so banged up, Florida State up front, they didn't even have time to practice, enough guys to practice in live scrimmage and goal line. So they go to the 3-4, put in extra linebackers because they're healthy and they can run, and look at them close the gap here. They don't even get back, as you say, to the original line of scrimmage. They just barely get there, but that's good linebacker play. So Duraney will come on to do the kicking again. The junior gets the foot into it, aiming it to the near side. Willie Reed is there at the 23-yard line. Reed decides, eh, let me try this. And that doesn't work either. He'll get a couple of yards on the return. Dewan Morgan, nice play on the coverage that time on the punt. Bobby Bowden, good enough to wear the mic for us. Pre-game, his old friend, 18 years, assistant coach here. Chuck Navato on the other side, and they met. Chuck, how you doing, pal? Good. How are you, coach? How you been? Oh, fine. Gosh, good to see you, man. This place looks better and better every time we come back. Yeah. What are all these cameras here for? I don't know. I think well, they, they, must be, they must be. I hope it's for a solo. <laughs> Go now. Okay, man. Let's do it now. Let's have it now. Let's have it, baby. Let's have it. Ready? Right now. Weatherford over the middle has it. That's going to be a first down up to the uh, yard beyond what they needed for that first down. Weatherford, one of the great passers in the game. Chris Davis, the receiver. This is a pressure beater, too. Weatherford's been taking some heat from that strong defensive line of NC State. So he goes to the three-step drop, the quick slant. It's a high percentage play, and you can't get pressure on it. Those are pretty impressive numbers. Look at this. Three-step drop. Bam. Release it on time. Here's your receiver just sitting there perfectly. Davis. Well done. Can't, you can't get any pressure on that. That'll be a first down and 10. They slot it to the right side on the draw play. Booker dives ahead trying to get to the line of scrimmage. Pat Lowry moved in, a junior middle linebacker, to put the hit on. As they are shuffling linebackers in and out of there. We'll see a lot of personnel involved because of the young players and also because of injuries on both of these teams. Not at the quarterback spot, though. Drew Weatherford. Looking to the sideline for the call. He's got one player down out there. That's Corey Niblick. He's, he's, he's tying his shoe. His shoe came off. He slid it back on. He's trying to get the heel in. <laughs> they didn't even tell him what the play is, and they're going to have to take a timeout. And look at Drew Weatherford saying, hey, wait a minute. Give him a, an equipment timeout. And the official says can't do that. And so Florida State is forced to take a timeout. Did you ever try and tie your shoelaces with gloves on? <laughs> Look at him. He'd say, he'd say, I can't do it, Gary. And he was right. <laughs> Beautiful day here. Some high clouds. Lots of sun this morning. Temperatures probably in the mid-80s for this game. And actually, the players get a benefit with a little bit of the clouds moving in. Otherwise, this would have been a 90-plus degree day down there on the field. You know, the coaches are going to get after Niblock. They're going to say, hey, next time you lose your shoe, line up with your sock we can't afford to take a time out there don't even worry about tying it you can get by one play weatherford gets the instructions 
on a second down and a 10. Two receivers right side, three to the near side. That's why Rutherford's alone at the 35-yard line. The quarterback out of the shotgun on the long yardage play. They come across the middle. It'll be caught. Good coverage that time as they take down Chris Davis. Davis was open, but A.J. Davis didn't let him run with it. It's another good read by Weatherford. It's the same play he ran a few seconds ago, only to the other side. Three-step drop. He thought the blitz was coming, and you hit the quick slam. He is first in the ACC in total offense with this arm. He reads man coverage. Here comes Davis. Got that little quick move and the slant in. So that'll bring up third and six, but a nice play by Weatherford. 46% successful third down conversion, second best in the ACC. They've got a third down at six here. They're all for two today in third down conversions. Weatherford out of the shotgun, looks for the quarterback draw, decides to throw, and gets it there for the first down. And that'll move it into Wolfpack territory at the 46-yard line. Willie Reed on the reception. Now, there's a freshman who continues to get more comfortable. We told you in the free game about Weatherford. He keeps his play alive, and by extending the play, it gives his receiver a chance to come open. So here's Willie Reed, and it's good coverage. He's held. He all of a sudden, he slides back, and Weatherford had stepped up in the pocket, bought a little extra time, and let him come free and hit him with the pass. Again, the five-receiver formation out of the shotgun first down first time into Wolfpack territory somehow he completed that and there will be a gain he took a hit Weatherford let it go as Manny Lawson and Williams moved in on him let's check in again with John Saunders John here in the BCS spotlight game presented by ABT update Michael Robinson of Penn State against Wisconsin opening drive off his heels tosses this one 43 yards to Dion Butler as the Nittany Lions take a seven to nothing lead. Remember, winner of this one controls their own destiny in the Big Ten, Garrett. Very important game, John will keep us updated on that. Second down and six now. Multiple receivers, four this time. They keep Booker back in the backfield on the handoff. He'll get down to the 39 yard line. How can you not feel good for Joe Paterno? You know, and, and you almost, you're pulling for him, not that you're pulling against Wisconsin, but huge turnaround you know we're talking about the defensive ends for NC State there's 91 that's lost in the other side is Mario Williams those two guys are going to be first round draft picks that's when they meet in the huddle and say hey I'll meet you at the quarterback and they both did that time and that's the hit they put on Weatherford the play before last they are a very deep concern for this Florida State offense to keep those defensive ends out of that backfield and off Weatherford a third down and three NC State scoring 17 seconds into the game on Andre Brown's run. 7-0. Looking to the near sideline. That's overthrown. That is incomplete. Cannot convert. And some pretty good coverage back there as Philip Holman was in there. This is one of those situations, if I'm Bobby Bowden, I take a good look at this. This is the four down area. You're out of field goal range, so you say, wait a minute. We might go on fourth down. Weatherford wanted to. He stayed on the field. As you look at that last third down play, the high and wide. But now they call Weatherford off to the sidelines. They get him off there, and they're going to punt it. To me, they did take a second look. He was thinking about it, but decided against it. Would like to get the Wolfpack back. Chris Hall will do the kicking. Blackman is standing back at his own 10-yard line. Hall, one of the seniors here today. Final game at home. 37 yards a kick. Has that one blocked in 83 games. And that one's going to be handled. Nice coverage down at the three-yard line. And it turns out to be a great decision to punt it because he wants to win the field position game. They were losing it. They were starting with bad field position. NC State was controlling that. And by making this decision, now you've got the Wolfpack backed up. Pat Watkins, a good play as he got back and took this down. That's about this. That's a nice high punt. Allowing Looked like him he to, was the punt return. Yeah, he got uh, turned around on that one. I want to remind you tonight, ESPN with a tremendous showdown, the huge ACC battle, BCS implications, number five Miami and number three Virginia Tech. That's going to come tonight at 745. How about the ACC with Tech three, Miami five, and Florida State also in the top ten. At eight or nine, depending on the poll. Yeah. All right, now the defense for the Seminoles will try and pin the Wolf back in right here. Marcus Stone at quarterback. Two in the backfield. Brown trying to find a little running room. Not a lot, but he muscles his way up to the five-yard line. Buster Davis, his 20th consecutive start at middle linebacker, moved in on the hit. You know, back when I was playing against the Wolfpack, 
they had a stable full of running backs they called the Stallions. It was Stan Fritz and Charlie Young and Willie Burden and Roland Hooks. They call this group of running backs now, they call them the Stallions too because they're loaded with guys like Andre Brown and Blackman and Baker in Washington. They're just trying to get some running room here. It'll be a second down and eight. Brown now with five carries already in his first start. Send the flanker in motion. Going to pass from the end zone. Looking, or at least try to, avoids one and wisely throws that one out of bounds. Marcus Stone avoided the hit in the end zone. Yeah, I, you know, he got lucky here. He threw it away, and it's a good decision to throw it away, but he's got to throw it away right now. Nobody's open, and there's pressure coming, and here comes the sack. He makes that tackle. That's two points for them. Norris had him in the grasp, or, or it looked like he really had him right there and then he slid out of that and then throws it away I thought he was going to throw it away before that because he risked the sack third down and eight this team has struggled in third downs only 29 percent third down conversions that is last in the ACC Brown in the backfield two receivers to the left side again we'll swing it to the near side into the middle dangerous pass incomplete at the 15 to Brown so Stone gets away with a couple. Nicholson in there on the coverage. And it works for the Seminoles. They're going to force a punt from the end zone or close to it for the Wolfpack. So the field position advantage and now all of a sudden the motivational advantage. These guys are emotional now. They, oh, that was a dangerous pass. So you take away that 65-yard run. There's five net yards. That's it for yep. the Wolfpack. Durrani's almost out of the end zone here. Willie Reed is back. Gets a high, booming kick. That'll be handled at the 47-yard line. Gets away at the 35 and great field position. As he's inside the 30, Marcus Hudson moved in to put the hit on, but a good return. 42-yard punt, 18-yard return. Delighted to have you with us here as the home of the Seminoles is the site. You see NC State 65 yards in 17 seconds on two plays Brown with a 65 yard run. That's our Nissan drive summary. And that's the only one on the board. And now you know why Bobby Bowden's a Hall of Fame coach. We were thinking all right he could go for the first down. Instead he punted it held them got a punt back and he's right where he would have been had he gotten that first down in the first place. To Weatherford out there finally with good field position Smith is in the backfield. Again, trying to run through that line is going to be tough. Maybe a couple of yards. Anton Smith, we talk about youngsters. Here's the number one recruited running back last year. 6,000 yards in his high school career. 44 touchdowns last year in high school. And came out two weeks ago against Duke and just exploded in his really first opportunity. He had 12 carries, 76 yards, two touchdowns. Got everybody's attention. And now here he is. Two weeks later and he's getting another shot. Bobby Bowden wanted to give him and Lamar Lewis a chance along with Booker with Washington out of the game because of an injury. It is a second down and eight but deep into Wolfpack territory. Weatherford again on the handoff to Lewis flag is down and he gets taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Good work by Oliver Hoyt playing with a bad ankle came in and put the hit on. Anton Smith never had a chance that time. I mean he was hit before he even took his first step. Now you see the penalty will go against the Wolfpack. Penalties have been a problem. Offside on the defense. Number 91 lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. More for Florida State than for Chuck Amato's team this season. But that one goes against the Wolfpack and nullifies a good defensive play. There you see the penalty so far in this game. Well, and NC State's gotten a lot better in the penalty category, also in the turnover category, and their defense is playing a lot better in the last two weeks. So we'll bring up the second down and three. Two receivers slotted to the right side on the draw. Get away from one to the 25-20, and a good carry to the 15, and that is Smith again. You look at the young players on both of these teams, and you go, wow. It's like a coming out party. Everybody's talking about the freshman and look at the speed first of all he breaks the tackle but then the explosion it's like he's got another gear he goes to and then dives ahead and gets the first I mean that's pretty impressive but Tullock comes over here and he is a number 50 right there one of the surest tacklers they've got he is their leading tackler 
and he just missed the tackle, and Smith ran through that one arm and got the first, moved Smith, the chains. Smith came in with just 22 carries on the season. He's going to uh, up that average here today. Weatherford's got a first down and 10 now in Wolfpack territory. The ball ended up being spotted at the 13-yard line. Out of the shotgun, big rush. He gets hit as he lets it go, and that is out of bounds. Wow, I'll tell you something. Weatherford has taken some shots here. Greg Carr was the intended receiver, the great high jumper who comes down more often than not with the football. 50, Tullock never gets touched. He comes on the blitz, missed the tackle on the last play, and says, hey, I want to make up for it. But Weatherford still got it off, and it's a jump ball for his guy Carr and almost made the touchdown anyway. Well, Weatherford did take a shot, didn't he? Timmy, though, he's completed about three passes already where I don't think he's ever seen where the football was going. He was looking up at the sky. Look at those numbers, too. That's why he's first in the conference in passing. Six for nine, and you're right. He's being hit and tattooed, but he's thrown to an area, thrown to a spot. It'll be a second down and ten. Again, they will work out of the shotgun from the 14-yard line, and before they can get the play off, the flag goes down. NC State's getting a little bit of its swagger back. This was the number one. Prior to the snap, false start, 66, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Last year, the number one defensive team in the nation, the nation. Timmy. This is Carr. Previous games, defenders have just not been able to get in the air high enough to deny him these jump ball catches. That's how Carr's being used. That's why he's got nine TD receptions this season. And the bottom line is he's six foot six. He's got a huge wingspan, which makes him much taller than that. And he's going against cornerbacks that are barely over six feet. Long yardage play to the 10. And out of bounds, just shy of the goal line. Did not make it in. Smith again with Niblock providing a key block as he turned the corner. If his foot did not touch the line, I thought it should have been a touchdown. The yep. ball was inside the pylon. And the officials are conferring. Take a look. Just watch his feet. If he doesn't touch the right line, this is going to be a touchdown. Here's the cut, and he's out of bounds right there. It was at, at about the five-yard line. They've got it marked inside the one. They're going to give him the touchdown. It is a touchdown. Now, this is a reviewable play. That's got to be out of bounds. He touched out of bounds at about the five-yard line. This is a reviewable play. Right there, just inside the five. Yeah. And, yeah. and then at the three, the other foot was out of bounds. Now we're going to get a timeout. I'm sure the video replay people have buzzed the referee, which literally that's what they do. Watch his left foot right there on the white line. His right foot is totally out of bounds. And so that should definitely not be a touchdown. In the ACC this year, they've had 47 reviewed plays. 19 have been overturned. This may be the 20th. Well, and when they look at it, too, they want indisputable video evidence. And here it is right there. If you stop his foot, it's on the line right there. And his other foot's completely out of bounds. This one is completely out of bounds. And so it's got to be inside the five or inside the three. Take your pick. Because this, this foot right there hits the white line. More a question to me of where you spot it. And then that one's completely out. Yeah. So the officials initially signaled that he was out of bounds, no touchdown. Then they conferred, signaled touchdown. Now you've got to have indisputable video evidence to show that the call on the field was wrong. And it certainly looks like they have that. Well, for me, that's your indisputable video evidence. If that foot's not, that one is. Great effort. But if he did stay in bounds, it should have been a touchdown, which they did rule, but obviously out. He dove with the football to try and keep it inside that pylon and over the line, break the uh, goal plane, which he did, but as you saw after he came in from out of bounds. How about these young kids? Is this unbelievable? And here in Tallahassee, they're talking about this group. They're seven and one. The one loss to Virginia, which they thought they should have won. Uh, they beat Miami early. And they're still very much in the hunt inside the top ten, obviously, and for a BCS bowl. And everybody here is talking about next year. Even Bobby lights up when he talks about next year because they're talking about a national championship possibility. Oh, you can see why. Here's the call. 
yard line. The ball will be placed at the three yard line. First and goal. So they didn't buy the one inside the five, the one that was on the white line. They bought the one that was completely out of bounds at the three. That was the indisputable video evidence. Indisputable. And no argument about that. You saw Bobby Bowden go on the uh, headset upstairs, so his people upstairs were looking, and it was clear this is not a 19-yard run. It's a 16-yard run and no touchdown. I'm sitting at home, and I'm NC State fans. I'm saying, you know what? Move that thing back another yard and a half. Yeah. That should be closer to the five rather than the three. Big difference when you get down here, especially for this Florida State team, as in the red zone, they've had 25 touchdowns, 32 out of 39 from the red zone. And the bad news is it's first and goal. Smith and Coleman will both come in, seventh in the ACC in red zone offense. They're trying to get this game tied up. Smith will take it on the pitch to the five, and he's not going to go any further than the four, and there's a flag down behind the play as Hoyt, Heath all moved in. And you this see why this was such a big call. This is a personal foul. And it's going to be against Florida State, so this will move them way back. That's why getting it right matters. This Holding on the offense, number 62, 10 yards from the previous spot, first down. So it's holding and not a personal foul. I thought they were going to get him for the personal. Then Lott called on it. Bobby Bowden going upstairs again. They want something out of this drive. This is a team that when they get down into this territory, they take advantage of it. Neblock out of St. Augustine, Florida. Second year starter, 62. Left side of the screen right there. There he is. Took him down. and See, I thought he had his face mask. I thought they were going to call a personal foul for slamming his head, but he let him go. And uh, going to let the clock run out here in the first quarter. So Florida State, a surprise 17 seconds into the game. They were the ones who had the surprise turned against them. Andre Brown scoring on the 65-yard run. Niblock having a tough time, lost his shoe, cost him a timeout. Now he's moving him away from the goal line. That, that just means as the game goes along, he's going to get even better. We've completed a quarter of the Wolfpack looking for the upset here today, and they have started out with a 7-0 lead. Get on the floor! Winning his coach in college football history with Paterno just behind him. Bobby Bowden, 40th year overall, 358 wins, 285 of them have come here at Florida State, 30th season here. It is a first and goal, but back at the 13-yard line, Weatherford on the pitch the other way to the 10, and driven out of bounds at the 6-yard line. Lorenzo Booker back in there, Garland Heath. Drives him out of bounds. And once again, Greg Carr, the 6'6 receiver, is out here by himself, had a mismatch, and he's shaking his head, and he's looking over the sideline saying, hey, come on my way. Instead, to go the other way, a little play action, slip it back. Good play. And Booker almost thought he had the corner, but knocked out of bounds at the 6. That's the respect for this Wolfpack front four. They're trying to get motion away, get the four started one way, and come back against that flow. Second down and goal. This is at the six yard line. Weatherford will slide it to the right side. That's where he's looking. Gets the rush. They're on him. Dumps it off. It's going to be caught at the 10, but nowhere to go, Lorenzo Booker. But there is a flag. Hoyt moved in on the hit. Flag is all the way down at the six. What a struggle here for Florida State. Trying to get into this end zone against this Wolfpack defense. There is no flag on the play for illegal formation. Which means I guess it was legal. Well, it looks like they had two guys moving and one did set, so they pick it back up. And now they'll have to go for the field goal. Or will they? No, nope, third stays down. Third down, weather's, weather's still there. I'm looking for 89. Where's 89? The alley-oop pass in the corner of the end zone. Instead, they bring in they bring in Fred Rouse, and there's Carl on the sidelines. Rouse comes into the ball game. He's another one of those speedy freshmen. Loss of three in the last play. Third down and goal from the nine-yard line. They send Davis in motion, looking. Here's the alley oop. Little push off both ways, and no flag either way. And that was for Rouse. Marcus Hudson on Rouse, and some excited. 
His 31st start, and Hudson could not wait for this one because he knew he was going to be up against some great receivers. You know, I'm surprised they brought Rouse in and took Carr out. I mean, you, you give up about five inches there. I mean, that's a pass Carr probably could have had. A little bit tall for Rouse. Yeah. 27-yard field goal. Sismania out, puts that one up, and it is good. He is now 11 out of 15 on the season. Florida State gets on the board. Uh, there was a flag down, but the Florida S State players indicating it's going to go against NC State. So hang on. Flag down on the play after the field goal was kicked. It is a personal foul, and it goes against the Wolfpack. So that will bring the offense back on. Weatherford coming out to find out now what the situation is. Chuck Amato disbelieving on the side that this Florida State team may get another chance. Personal foul, leaping on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Wow. And this puts them right back where they started this entire drive. This will be at about the three or inside the three, and it'll be first and goal. Or inside the five, rather, and it'll be first and goal. A new rule in college football this season. You cannot, when leaping, come down on another player. And you cannot go up another player's back. Take a look at number one, Hudson. I think that's what he did. What an enormous play that is. I'm on defense now. I'm saying, hey, we've got a break here. People look at you like you're crazy. Say, hey, they just took three off the board. Yeah. We've got to make some stops here. Booker is in the backfield. First and goal. Booker. To the right. Trouble is, to the right went the Wolfpack. He'll lose yardage. Hudson gets a little back on that one. This senior playing an inspired game so far out of that cornerback position. I'm going to tell you something. 91 Lawson, number nine Williams. These defensive ends get after you pretty good. Here comes Carr back into the ball game. They get some pressure. They get upfield. They cause you to run wide. They have good containment. There's good force. And all, all of a sudden, you've got produce, uh, pursuit coming. And there's white jerseys everywhere. This team defensively for NC State, 34th against the rush, 23rd in the nation against the pass. Keep an eye on Carr. See whether or not they go that way. They'll work out of the shotgun here in the second down and goal, looking into the corner on the cross pattern, and uh, loses yardage, ran backwards. Made the catch, tried to find some room. Chris Davis took himself back a yard, and a nice tackle by A.J. Davis. I know we're hammering this thing, but Carr was wide open. Part of it, Timmy, I think is the rush that they're seeing from the Wolfpack. Watch the inside receiver is Carr, and he goes to the back corner. He's back there by himself. Davis comes underneath, and you're right, gave ground to try to gain ground, and they caught him. And now the Wolfpack want a timeout. So timeout. a third down. North Carolina State. Goal First coming charge, up. First charge, timeout. A timeout is going to be taken, and a 7 nothing lead. Carr may be having, well, is having some problems over here on the sideline. Maybe that's why he was not in on that series before. And it doesn't look like he's going to get in on this series. We'll see. Can Florida State find the end zone? Still valid. Back at Florida State where freshman wide receiver Greg Carr being taken back to the locker room to have a right hip pointer observed. Gary? It came off the field, the Susie, after that last play and went down, as you see here, clearly hurting. So a weapon gone right there. And another third down and goal. Amazing. Florida State just cannot find the end zone. Weatherford again on that reverse play. Booker, and again they hold. This NC State defense is going, you know, we're not going to go over there and run ourselves out of position. On this possession alone, they had first and goal at the 14, first and goal at the 3, first and goal at the 4, and no points. This time he cuts back in where all the pursuit is. It's like a little reverse. It's that same one they showed before where they showed the option, but he comes back inside rather than trying to get to the outside. What a fine play by Manny Lawson, who held his ground. 25-yard field goal attempt. This one is up, and this one is good. So they kicked the field goal, had a penalty, got the ball back, first down and 10, deep in the red zone. 
and they're held again. Psychological advantage goes to NC State. Defensively outstanding series. And so does the lead, 7-3. College football and ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet and American Revolution. Aflac, to find your 2005 Aflac Holiday Duck, visit our website. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler, Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. With Tim Bratz, Susie Schuster, I'm Gary Thor. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Beautiful day here in Tallahassee, Florida, at least weather-wise. Not so good on the field so far offensively for either team. No, that was the most bizarre drive I think I've ever seen. That was an 11-play, 21-yard drive. It started at the NC State 29. And got three points. It was it. Twice. Twice. Yeah. Couldn't count the first field goal, though, since they got it back. This booming kick is going to take a roll and touched in the end zone. Darrell Blackman running this one out. He touched that one in the end zone, and he, he wasn't sure. Whether he was at the one or behind the goal line, he brings it back out. Pretty good return, actually, on that to get back out to about the 17-yard line. Well, a lot of guys don't understand the muff rule, and if they're not certain, they do bring it out, and that was the good call, and he almost got it out to the 20 anyway. Got all the way out to the 17-and-a-half-yard line. But here, the ball's momentum now carries him into the end zone. He could have taken a knee there, but instead he's not sure of it, so he brings it back. Not a bad decision. Back up over the 17. Better to be sure on that one. Sure. Sure. Marcus Stone, uh, quarterback for Wolfpack, going back to work here. Both these defenses have risen to the occasion after that initial touchdown. Stone from his own 10 gets away, avoids the sack, and is taken down at the 22-yard line, or at the uh, 17, rather, by Buckley. Well, Stone's been dodging defenders all day long, and he just can't get comfortable in the pocket. I mean, this is supposed to be a timing pattern. Five steps, stop and throw. But again, there was so much pressure back there, he's got to tuck and go. Llewellyn had the first chance at him, couldn't get there, loss of one, second, and the 11. First two plays, 65 yards and a TD since then. 10 plays and four yards. They'll add a little here, but be close to a first down. Running to the right side, Watkins moved in and put the hit on. That's Pat Watkins. He's had a couple of interceptions working against the rush that time, and they're going to bring the sticks out and measure. He's nope, a good-looking running back, though. Look at him. He gets out behind the blocker. That's just an excellent play by number 22, Pat Watkins, who's a senior and an outstanding safety. But, I, I mean, you watch that freshman run. He's got great instincts. No sticks on this. It's going to be a third down and 10. It was back to the original line of scrimmage. Third down and 10. Stone working out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the near side. A lot of time into the pocket. And he'll get it back up to about the 22-yard line. Stone wants to throw first and run second. You've seen him back up a number of times. That time, no choice. Buckley put the hit on. But when you're playing against Florida State at Doe Campbell, you can't have a lot of three and outs. And that's what NC State's gotten in the habit of doing here. And they're going to have to punt this one again. Kick will come from about their own 10-yard line. John DeRaney with Willie Reed back for Florida State. He's got plenty of time. The kick is going to come down at the 34-yard line. Good coverage and drives him back to the 29. Good effort by the Wolfpack. Garland Heath has been involved in some real fine coverage on the punts here in this game. A 45-yard punt and minus five on the return. When we come back, Weatherford, he spent a lot of time on the field. With that offense so far to show three points. A little shy, but we got a little finger wave going there. Young Seminole fan on hand and a 7-3 NC State lead. That guy's on his recruiting trip. That's exactly right. That's how young they're getting them now. That'll count as one. First down and a 10. Weatherford out near side 30, 35, and that is Lorenzo Booker in his first start this season, both Welcome running here, and Lorenzo receiving Lorenzo so far Booker. in this game. Martel He's Brown moved in with a hit. You know, NC State is last in the league in time of possession, and again here today, you can see that the defense for the Wolfpack is staying on the field way too long. You can't have three and outs against Florida State. And so far, NC State in their last four possessions, all three and outs, total of eight yards. So if you do that, 
you know, you let Weatherford back on the field, you let their offense and all those weapons back on the field against the tired defense, and it's lethal. This defense has got to be a little bit tired, as you say, Timmy. They haven't had any time to rest. Weatherford at Davis in motion, passes completed right into the fender for maybe a yard gain on that. Fred Rouse getting some playing time. A.J. Davis out of Durham, North Carolina, put the hit on. Rouse, one of four true freshmen to score this year, and his playing time was picked up when Reed was hurt, but then Carr became very productive, and so Rouse kind of sat down, and now Rouse getting time again with Carr out. Susie. Well, you guys are talking about how tired the defense is. They did look exhausted coming off the field, most notably Oliver Hoyt, the mid linebacker. A lot of guys, Tim, with their hands on their hips. I know you always look for that in a game. That body language. a little room but not enough this front four is still playing well Booker on the carry Tullock moved in on the hit Tullock had 12 tackles last week he averages 13 a game which is eighth best in the nation and second most in the ACC and you can see the pads going up and down some heavy breathing going on Tullock's brother played for Florida State he knows this stadium well he's their leading tackler you talk about the last couple games he had how about Mario Williams with his Nine and a half tackles for a loss and seven sacks in the last two games. Man, this Both is those guys. Solid defense. Yeah. A second down and six. Florida State trying to get that ball into Wolfpack territory out of the shotgun at the 50 yard line. That'll be incomplete. A little too hot to handle on that one, and it goes out of bounds. Rod Owens, the intended receiver. Another now freshman. it's time for this week's Aflac trivia question. Could I hear the duck, please? NC State's Andre Brown rushed for 248 yards last week versus Southern Miss. Who holds the ACC record for rush yards in a game by a freshman? I know that answer. Do you know that answer? Well, you were at the meeting yesterday when we went over the question. We made after I got it wrong, and then they gave me the answer. That was the time. One for six in third down conversions. Another third down here. Weatherford will step up, throws on the run, completed at the 40, and that'll be brought down to the 33-yard line. Fred Rouse. Good coverage by Morgan, but not enough to knock the ball away. 20-yard gain. Boy, Rouse has good speed. We talked about his ability to get open and separate. He's learning more and more. This is man coverage, and look at him now. He gets off of them, and after the five yards, look at the separation that he gets just enough for Weatherford to put the ball in there. Good speed, good separation, and again, just a freshman. A lot of receivers getting uh, work today here for Florida State. Rouse had only two receptions coming into this game, and he's already there. Again, on the first and ten shotgun, Weatherford looking, wants to go over the middle. That's going to be completed to Davis to the five. Touchdown! Well, I'm not sure words can tell you how nice that pass was from Weatherford. He threw it before the break. He looks over the middle, now he looks right, he comes back, throws it before the break. And there he is, Chris Davis once again, his fourth touchdown of the year. That was pretty. His 15th touchdown pass this season for the Weatherford. The extra point attempt is up, and it is good. This measure puts it through. Chris Davis, 33-yard touchdown reception. This is just how good it was. Right on the money and a nice carry afterwards. He was four for five in passing Weatherford on that drive, and he gets him on the board and a lead. Uh, great views today from Tallahassee being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship, Bloomin' Onion 1. Our captain, Chad Palmer, today at the controls of the Bloomin' Onion, high above Dope Campbell Stadium. On this lovely fall day here in Tallahassee. And Florida State up now. As you know, Reed's trying to get himself back in shape here. He got his bell rung. I think part of it was they had all those downs in the red zone, couldn't score. They came back. The defense is tired to hit the big one to, to Reed. Or else. That is Blackman from the one. And he will return that to the 20 yard line. Blackman, who is number one in returns on kickoffs in the ACC. Ingram took him down. Some great football being played this time of year. Tonight, 745, a major matchup. Miami and Virginia Tech may well decide that conference division championship. Move from there. 
Sunday, the Eagles and the Redskins, with Owens having been suspended indefinitely, not going to be involved in that, and maybe not for a while, Sunday ESPN. And then Monday, the matchup everybody's talking about, the two great quarterbacks, the Colts and the Patriots, that's going to be going on ABC. Three great games in three days. First down and 10. Brown, look at the hole. 30! Look at the Jets! Trying to go the distance. One man to get him at the 30, and he's driven out of bounds. That is Tony Carter, who finally caught up with Andre Brown. That kid is explosive and strong. Boy, they hit the shallow gap and went away from the motion. They used the motion to position the defense, and then they exploded right. Look at that hole. Oh, my, was it open. You talk about a shallow gap. They set the motion left. He went right. There was nobody in the gap and exploded for that big run. James Newby, number 78, with a fine block right there. A 49-yard gain. He's had gains of 65 and 49 rushing on two separate plays. The pitch again against the motion. He's naked at the 30, 25, 20, turns the corner and dances to the 10. Blackman. On the carry was Darrell Blackman. So you take Stop Brown out after a long run, and you bring in Darrell Blackman, and Darrell explodes. Fresh legs, and he's got quicks. He started all but two games besides being one of the best return guys in the country. And here he's got fresh legs, and boy, is he dangerous around that corner. Finally knocked out of bounds again by the safety, Pat Watkins. He's had a couple of running TDs this season. And the NC State offense with Brown back in there now. A first down and 10. Even Florida State territory, and Brown stacked. That'll be for a loss as Flewellen. In his eighth Andre start, number 96 stood him up. He came out in two tight ends, and they have a difficult time running like that. What NC State does is they have motions away and formations, and they try to position the defense and form a weakness, like they did on Brown's big run, because it's a shallow gap. They move the linebackers over. There's nobody once you get through the line of scrimmage. Both these defenses being tested here today to hold their positions and not be drawn by the flow going the other way. Loss of a couple on that last play, second down and 12. Fake the draw, big rush. Gets away from one. And will be brought down at the 15-yard line. Uh, more of a willingness by Marcus Stone to take off with a football. Hall put the hit on. Well, he gets back. He's certainly not comfortable in the pocket. And he can feel the pressure. 54, Nicholson's coming around one side and Sims on the other. So he feels that and has to bail out. Does a pretty good job picking up yardage, but it's going to bring up third down and long. He just doesn't have time back there to throw. Saw that football come loose probably after he hit the ground, but he was concerned and was able to haul it back in. So it will be a third down, long yardage, third down and nine. Third down conversions. They are 0 for 4 today. The draw play by Stone inside the 10 and gets twisted around at about the seven yard line. It does not look as though he got enough for the first down, but a flag Gabriel is Marcus down. Stone. That's made by number eight, Roger Williams. This is going to be holding against NC State. Although the NC State guy's pointing at the Florida State guy, so who knows? <laughs> he does. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard counter to third down. So that will move it back and another third down situation. Florida State on top by a score of 10 7 as the Wolfpack trying to pull the upset. This team has done that before here. NC State's the only ACC team to beat Florida State at home in the ACC. Terry, this is definitely a passing situation. Stone is only one for six. And that was a little screen, high percentage play. Two tight ends. Brown is in the backfield. Fake to him. Stone steps up again. Not this time brought down at the 25-yard line. Good rush put on. Flewellen again came in with Wembley helping out. Yeah, and it, you can only run the draw so many times, especially if you're not being able to throw. And here they just don't have the confidence that he's throwing well. So they tried to run the draw to Brown, and they go, watch this. He goes to the wrong side. 
Brown went behind him. He was looking for him on the right side. Brown went to the left side. So a mix, mix up, miscommunication, and consequently now they've got a long field goal attempt. Long field goal to Rainey out there to do the kicking. It is a 43 yarder, and the flag is down. This might be a delay game. Prior to the snap, false start, 76, offense, five yard penalty, wow. fourth down. Well, he jumped just before it hit zero, I'll tell you that, so it was one or the other. So they're going to back that one up, make the kick uh, even longer. Crouch that time was the man charged with moving. So Duraney will try it again. He is nine for 11 in the field goal department. This is going to be five yards longer, a 48 yard kick for Duraney. His longest is 37. That is up, and that is good. So he took the penalty and got it done anyway. John Duraney, who has done all of their kicking, both punting and place kicking, last year and this year, ties this game up at 10-10. That was impressive, too. That, that field goal right there could have been good from 55 yards, 60 yards. I mean, he, he blasted this. Watch when it gets to the upright, how, how high over the crossbar it is. Look at this. I mean, that ball is really tattooed. He had not even tried one that long before this season. He does here and makes it. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Craig and Aaron will be along. Highlights and analyses from important and interesting football games being played today. Plus the ESPN Game Day crew, a preview of tonight's magnificent matchup, number six Miami and number three Virginia Tech. Well, 10-10 couple touchdown favorites Florida State coming into this game not so far there you see the NC State drive six plays 50 yards 315 our summary presented by drive insurance from progressive Timmy helping me out here holding the card and moving it while I'm trying to read it thank you so much Susie's got a dog named Hudson you know and I'm going to sick that dog on you for doing that I love Hudson. I love Hudson too. Taken back at the three by Lamar Lewis. Lewis looking for the hole near side. We'll get it to the 20. And did that hurt? Wow. Where's the football? Ernest Jones with a great hit. And an NC State says they've got it. No signal yet from the officials. Yeah, so they don't. Florida State. Florida State's got the football. What a shot put on on a head on tackle. <laughs> Oof. Boy, anytime you see your head go back like that, you know it's a good lick. Chauncey Graham originally hit him, and then Ernest Jones, 45, had that second shot. That's one of those high-low hits right there. That hurts. This is what they call a slobber knocker. Damn. <laughs> I've been accused of that eating out, actually. <laughs> All right, it'll be a first down and 10 like last night see the football came loose no wonder after that hit and boy that that was an interesting recovery the freshman Smith has come on to play in the backfield here Weatherford on the first and ten fakes to him and rolls over the middle incomplete double coverage at the 30 yard line uh, that pass though buried in the dirt no chance to hang on to it NC State's Brown rushed for 248 against Southern Miss last week who holds the ACC record for rushing yards in a game by a freshman famous Amos Lawrence North Carolina answer is you were right against the Cavaliers the Wahoos of Virginia our Aflac trivia question and answer famous Amos was a terrific player and there's a young man Brown who may just be that himself two big chunks of pay dirt picked up today in the touchdown that he scored 17 seconds in Weatherford back at his own 10 yard line throws that one into the flats and that one is going to be incomplete Chris Davis the intended receiver nobody open all of a sudden Drew Weatherford looks a little uncomfortable back in the pocket two bad passes he rolled on the little waggle in the last pass and threw it into the dirt threw this one into the dirt when he seemingly you know, seemed to be set and were able to throw. Florida State lives and dies by the pass. As rushing-wise, they are 90th in the nation of 117 teams. But passing, they are ninth and number one in the ACC, 324 yards a game. Here are you guys right there. There are you two 
They're going to be first rounders. See if they get any pressure on Weatherford. Big third down and 10 situation. Just gets that one off out of the shotgun. Again, rolling it to the flats. And not going to be nearly enough for the first down. That is Smith on the reception, and A.J. Davis has done a heck of a job on coverage over there. Takes him out of bounds. Great defense. They did get a little bit of pressure. Kept him in the pocket. Three-man rush. Everybody sitting back in the dime, and they got three guys in pursuit of this. Now, look at the three-man rush. They keep him in there in the middle. Now, he throws out in the flat. And watch all the white jerseys get to the ball. This is read, react, and get over there in a hurry. Well done. Fine coverage. The Wolfpack defense again. Outstanding effort. This punt will come back uh, from about the 14 when Chris Hall puts a foot into it. The senior gets a high booming kick. Blackman got to let that one go, and uh, it'll take a bounce out of bounds at the 30-yard line. So the defense for the Wolfpack rises to the occasion again with 344 to go in the half and a 10-10 game. But again, you need the offense of NC State to get something besides a three and out. I mean, they've got to get a couple first downs, eat up a little of the clock, keep Drew Weatherford and that Florida State offense on the bench a little bit. And we want to remind you, near the conclusion of our game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. I think Marcus Stone has to prove to Florida State that he can complete some passes. First start was last week. He is the quarterback. 6-4. Sophomore, 230 pounds. Flag is down, and he whips that one out of bounds and pays for it. John McKeon was the uh, man putting the hold on, I think, on this call. That's what it is. Llewellyn was putting the rush on. McKeon had to grab him, and that's going to be the holding call. Let's see if there's more than one flag here, though. There was another one thrown on the other side of the field. Personal foul, offensive face mask, number 78, 15 yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. I think there were, and I think that's the one that will matter. The face mask called. Now that will drive them back. Florida State gets the break on that one. I know when he threw it away, he threw it so high, it went over the players, it went over the bench, and it, people in the stands were ducking. He did get rid of it, however. Look at this, though. I mean, they're going to make him throw. They're up here to stop the run. They're saying if he's going to get the first down, he's got to do it throwing. First and 25, reluctant to throw. Florida State will let that happen as Andre Brown again on the carry. Going straight ahead, Ernie Sims was there to put the hit on. One of the Butkus finalists, Sims, number 34. There he is. This kid can play. Boy, can he play. Watch 34 right here. Sit, read. Now he's coming. There it is. Break down, stay low, wrap him up, grab cloth. He was the ACC defensive uh, back of the week last week with 11 tackles, an interception, and a fumble recovery in that game. Tremendous effort. Comes right back here. Semifinals for the Buckus Award. Big time player. Brown has had nine carries, 114 yards, second and 21 here. Student body left, and it'll work up to the 30 yard line. It's not going to be enough for a first down. Brown again on the carry, and A.J. Nicholson on the hit. There's the timeout. other Florida State finalist. Second charge timeout. Meeting the young freshman on the tackle. Florida State's taking a timeout because they feel very confident the defense is going to make a stop, and they're going to get the ball back with pretty good field position. Here's Sims again. You know, Sims, look at the block by Hill now to knock him out of the way, but Sims is so fast, and he plays with bad intentions, and he's going to tell him about it. <laughs> I mean, Anthony Hill, 83 right there, is getting an earful. Pretty good work right there. Good block put on. But Sims, Sims is one of the fastest guys on the team. He's, yep. he's a 4-4 guy yep. with that speed. Pacific Life game summary. Take a look. This game got out of the blocks in a hurry. Andre Brown. And he just turned it loose. Look at the skip off from the freshman. And look at the speed. Florida State came back. They got a field goal, 25-yard field goal from Sismasia. Then Chris Davis with a beautiful pass from Weatherford for 33 yards and the touchdown. And then Duraney with the long field goal from just under 50 yards to tie it at 10, and that's where we are. Good football game here in Tallahassee. And Giacomato hoping in this his sixth season. He can get an upset win here. He has been under pressure at home for a team that's three and four overall and just one and four in the ACC after a disappointing year last year when they went five and six. 
Third down and 14. Wolfpack Brown again on the carry, and that's just not going to fly. Uh, if you can't throw, then you're not going to move the ball. You're not going to move the chains. They don't have to respect the pass. Nicholson moving in again on the hit. The senior linebacker and uh, Emmer Wimbley's yeah, hurt. Wimbley down on the field. Here's 54, A.J. Nicholson, who comes through and reads it all the way, steps up into the hole and makes the tackle, and Wembley's still down. Nicholson is also, in addition to being a Butkus finalist, a Bednarik finalist for the Defensive Player of the Year, as well as Linebacker of the Year. And, you know, Ch Chuck Bednarik was one of those guys that played with bad intentions. Yep. I mean, he was on the field. He wasn't there to make friends. So this uh, Florida State defense highlighting Sims and Nicholson as linebackers, both of whom up for national awards including the Butkus Award as both he and Sims are semifinalists in that department that's that's a rare occurrence to have two finalists for that award on the same team and how about out of the conference and then up in Maryland you've got the Jackson who's one of the leading candidates leads the nation in tackles he's also a Butkus Award semifinalist and the attention being given on the field here with 237 left to go in this 10 10 game We've talked about uh, Ernie Sims before. Call it a player cam. Take it home. Look around. Tell us what you see. That's my picture right there. And from high school, I got that award right there. Got National High School Defensive Player of the Year. You see the 34 jersey over there hanging up. Um, as you see right there, me, these newspaper articles when I was in there, getting recruited and everything. It's a lot of gold medals up there. So you already know what that means. Sam's win a lot of races. Ernie Sims a hard hitter. Y'all better remember that. <laughs> Sims is a hard hitter and he's fast. Wins a lot of races. Commentary provided by Ernie Sims. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good look right there. All right, fourth down and 14. So Duraney's come on to do the kicking. Fred Rouse will be standing back at his own 30 yard line. John Duraney, the junior. Good putter, 41 yards average coming into the game. And they're going to use a timeout. They were hoping to maybe draw a penalty there. Five timeout. Would have North been enough. Carolina State. Second charge timeout. To get him a first down so that that one didn't work. You see Duraney coming back smiling. <laughs> I did my part. I stood there. <laughs> we'll be back. This time I think we'll get a punt. Ten ten with a punt coming up. We have someone on the phone, Timmy. Who is it? Bob Davey, one of the outstanding coaches in college football, now one of the top analysts. Bob, how are you? Tim, I'm doing great. How you guys doing? Good. You're driving down to Blacksburg for the big game tonight. Tell me, Miami, Virginia Tech, who do you like? I'm going to tell you the first thing, Tim, and I know you'll appreciate this. I think this game tonight will prove that two great defenses can be just as entertaining to fans across the country is two great offenses. Yeah, I, I think people will really enjoy this game tonight. I certainly agree with that. And playing right there in Blacksburg, you know, Virginia Tech always plays well. It's interesting for me to see three teams from the same conference in the top ten. Florida State here, Bob, is still thinking they've got a chance for a BCS game. They'll be watching tonight closely, and I think they want Virginia Tech to win. Well, I, you can't help but look ahead to the ACC championship game, and whether it's Miami and Florida State in a rematch or Virginia Tech, Florida State, that's going to be a great game. But how about the Big East losing both Virginia Tech and Miami and also Boston College? I mean, this thing has worked out exactly like the ACC at Hope. Yeah, no, absolutely no question about that. Bob, hang on just a second here as we uh, have a first and 10 after the punt. Florida State starting at their own 22-yard uh, line. Weatherford under pressure, dropped off, completed to the 26-yard line. They want to run the fast offense on it. Rod Owens on the catch. Bob, tonight, we're going to see a low-scoring game, then? Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. And you know what? you got to kind of be a, a statistic nerd, I think, Gary, and look way inside those statistics to things like turnover margin, uh, passing efficiency, non-offensive touchdowns. And really, Virginia Tech has the advantage if you look at all those other stats. And, you know, but the bottom line is probably going to come down to two or three plays in this game. Nobody knows what two or three plays. But somebody got to step up and make some gigantic plays for one of these things. But if you see, if you want to pick out two bullet points, you'd have to say right now, I would think anyway, the kicking game and Marcus Vick. Oh, no question. No question. I mean, I think this game will be decided by which young quarterback 
can handle the pressure and be efficient. And certainly, I think Marcus Vick has the advantage in that. Uh, Kyle Wright, it's been, it's been a little bit tough to evaluate him, Tim, because, to be quite honest, he's been on his back a lot. You know, Miami's had a hard time protecting. But I think Marcus Vick right now uh, is just a dynamic player. So I think Virginia Tech has the edge when it comes to quarterback a little bit. Well, for Florida State, Bob, I see if I, I see why they want Virginia Tech to win. They've beaten Miami. If Virginia Tech wins, they'll meet them in the championship game, and they feel if they beat Virginia Tech, they're going to the BCS. Uh, no question. And, you know, I've had Florida State this year and uh, twice. And you talk about some young talents. And let me ask you, I'm not watching the game, but they've thrown the ball up to 89 Greg Carr yet in the end zone. Well, he's been injured here a little, and this is going to be a sack all the way back to the three-yard line. Drew Weatherford taking down by Presley on a tremendous rush and Mario Williams got to him. Uh, they tried to get the car uh, once in this one Bob but he's gone out with a hip pointer and has not come back in here in the second quarter. Now NC State's going to take the time out after a loss of 10 with 50 seconds left they want to get the football back themselves. Well Bob we'll let you make the Please rest of that drive. The game clock to 56 seconds. 56 seconds on the game clock. But Bob, we'll be watching tonight. That's a game that everybody wants to see, a monster game. Well, Tim, thank you. And Gary, you guys have a great second half now. Bob, thanks very much. Have a great time. Okay, guys. And thanks so much for hanging with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to watch Bob. He does such a great job. Bob Coach Davey was with us for the first quarter, waiting to get, the, and then they ended up on the cell phone to finally get him. We appreciate him doing that for us. What a game they've got lined up. There are the standings we've been talking about. USC Texas have gone back and forth Virginia Tech the remaining question no one's able to answer is if everybody runs the table will the strength of Virginia Tech schedule allow them to move into one or two see this is what Florida State sees this and they say hey we beat these guys here I mean we ought to be ahead of Miami and they think that they will if Virginia Tech can take care of business tonight they will move up ACS standings presented by Allstate and they certainly will be interesting as this season rolls along to the final few games so Weatherford is coming back out now 10 10 game they, you heard him say put seconds back it's 56 seconds now on the clock. Well, we'll see what happens here. NC State has no timeouts left this punts. Going to come from well they're not going to yet it's third down at 27. Do you dare to put the football up in the air here. Answer is no, so it'll be handled at the six-yard line. Just trying to find a little punting room. Booker ran it out. And they'll run this clock down to about 15 seconds, 10 seconds right in there, left in the half. And then Florida State, I mean, NC State's still going to get good field position. We'll see what happens here if they get into field goal range. Fair catch, get the field goal, bam, done. No time off the clock. You see the clock ticking right now at 30 seconds? Let's see if it goes down to... 15 seconds. Do you it? try and block this? And not worry about the return. Well, no, that's that's exactly right because you, if you fair catch the ball, no time goes off the clock. You get the field goal unit on. Yep. All right, back for, uh, into the end zone. Pretty good rush was put on. This is going to be important. Fair catch called for and taken at the 43-yard line by Blackman. So a 38-yard punt out of the end zone. You see the time remaining, eight seconds. And we'll see whether or not we get an enormous field goal attempt here. As they're talking on the sideline. And coming up, our Capital One halftime show, John Craig and Aaron with a highlight. Some great games uh, have been played and some going on. ESPN Game Day crew preview of tonight's matchup number six, Miami, and number three, Virginia Tech. Great to have you with us here. Chuck D'Amato Amato calling out what he wants. Well, after the fair catch, he has the, the option to call for a free kick. Yeah. With no rush. Does he want to do that with the ball at the 43-yard line? One for six and eight yards for Marcus Stone. Nowhere near what we expected to see in the attempts. They never got it going, the uh, passing game. And the running game has been stopped. Timeout, Florida State. Now Florida State. Third and last charge timeout. They use their last timeout. A big eight seconds here in a 10-10 game. And the coaches conferring as to what they want to do on the sideline. Bobby Bowden looking out and talking upstairs as well. A field goal attempt would be a 60-yarder 
You know, that one he kicked a little while ago would have been good from 60. But that's still too far, I think, for him. Because you move back like that, you try to put that little extra effort into it. It comes out low, and too many bad things can happen. Still discussions going on on the sideline about it. John Duraney, their kicker. Taking a long look out there. Duraney's one of only 10 Division I players last year who did all of the kicking, all of it. Kickoffs, punting, field goals, and he's doing it again this season. Well, he brings Marcus Stone back in, and they take Duraney off. See, the field goal he made was 48 yards. They load up with three receivers to the near side. Marcus Stone will go under center. A lot of room. Going to try the Hail Mary. Coverage in the end zone. It'll be incomplete. And that will run the time off the clock. So after all of that, the decision to go with one of those to try and get it in the end zone, it does not work. So in the first half, Marcus Stone ends up just one out of seven in the passing department. But it is a 10-10 game. And let's get downstairs to Susie. All right, Gary, thanks very much. Coach Amato, how important psychologically is it for your defense to hold Florida State to three in that red zone push earlier in the second? Uh, it was big because we had to do it twice because we got called for a penalty for jumping, we, and, and then we did it again on first and go on a five, and they only got three. It, that's why it's a tie game right now. That's huge. You're a defensive guy. What are you seeing in their offense that you can attack? You. <laughs> what about Stone? How do you improve him in this game? Well, well, we're going to try to straighten that out at halftime. How about Andre Brown? He's running like we are. Yes, <laughs> faster though. All right, Coach, thanks. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Susie's dog Hudson is going to be mighty proud of her ability to run down that side. That's line. the second run she's had today. I that, saw her running this morning. Unbelievable. That's why she was warming up. This sideline stuff is not easy to me. We just stand here and talk. It's 10-10 at the half. This is Jeopardy! from Raleigh's night at 7.30 on ABC 11. We welcome you back, and it was the Wolfpack who welcomed themselves into this football game 17 seconds in. Andre Brown on his way, 65-yard touchdown run in the early lead. Then the Wolfpack defense went to work. Weatherford not finding time to pass the football until... He connected Davis cutting across the middle reception and a fine run to take it in for the touchdowns a couple of field goals and that's where this has come for Stone Florida State defense has been all over him and he's not been able to throw successfully. Welcome back everybody our college football coverage at ABC 10 10 as we get ready for the third Timmy and an interesting uh, first half a lot of strange plays and a couple of big plays and that was about it yeah, offensively no, no question about it especially for Brown the freshman at NC State he had those two big runs of 65 and 49 yards outside of that they haven't really been able to run the ball effectively and certainly have not been able to pass Marcus Stone the young freshman quarterback has struggled he's only one for seven and because of that Florida State is loading up the box and they're daring in the pass they want him to pass you know Florida State has had 13 more snaps and had the ball six more minutes than has NC State amazing what may happen here in the second half is can Florida State run the ball they haven't that may make a huge difference on the other side of it can NC State pass the football they haven't on the kickoff Florida State will get it 20 25 and a good return up to about the 28 yard line where they will take over on the first down and a 10. Kenny O'Neill bringing it back. Time now for the Pacific Life game summary, and we've been talking about it because they've got to get this thing going. If they don't, well, here's the deal. If you look at the time of possession, they've had the ball a lot more than has NC State. Third down, 0 for 6 for the Wolfpack. That has to change. You cannot give a team that many more snaps, that much more time of possession, and that third down conversion rate where you haven't gotten one and expect to win especially on the road all right let's see what adjustments have been made here as we start this third quarter Rutherford on the handoff working coming around the near side a uh, couple of good hits right there may have made it to the 30 yard line but a fine hit by Marcus Hudson let's check in Susie Schuster well, Gary, uh, Bobby Bowden said it's all about tackling better on defense and getting rid of the penalties on offense. He said whoever blocks better is going to win this game. Now, sad news for Cameron Wimbley, a senior day, and he's done for the day with a sprained left knee. As for Greg Carr, he will be back in the game, guys. Carr, their young receiver we were talking about, who they love to go to in the end zone with his tremendous height differential. We'll see if he gets back in. There he is, second down and eight. Carr way out there on the left side. 
He'll keep two in the backfield to help out on the blocking. Over the middle. That's going to be taken by Booker to 40. Try to get to midfield and will and moves into NC State territory. Lorenzo Booker at a 22-yard gain. You know, you're right. You were right about the first half. Florida State had only 27 yards on the ground, although Smith showed some explosion. So they go right back to the pass. But this is as good as a running play. I mean, it's a high percentage. Just dump it, get it to your, your running back, Lorenzo Booker, and turn him loose. Give him a chance to go. He started first start today for Booker with Washington out with an injury. And he is both, as you can see, a receiver, as he had three receptions for 21 yards in the first half. First down and 10. Weatherford looking. He wanted to go on the sideline. Receiver fell down or pushed down. No argument, so apparently slipped and fell. Incomplete. You know, you go to those little dink and dunk type passes to your running back, and what that does, it breaks it down from an 11 on 11 game to a 3 on 3 game. You have it in your, your running back's hands quickly, and here's the pass he just overthrew. Actually, I think he was thrown out of way. That was good coverage. A.J. Davis has done an outstanding job. The entire defense for the Wolfpack has been exceptional here today. They've risen to the occasion, even though Drew Weatherford had some completions. It'll be a second down and at 10. The 48-yard line out of the shotgun again. The big rush from the ends. They both go around him. Open receiver. That'll be caught for a first down at about the 33-yard line. Once he got away from the rush, he had time and a lot of room to make that pass completion to Rod Owens. And I think that's a key, what you just said. He's keeping these plays alive. He's extending them. Can't find anybody on the right side. Steps up, scrambles a little bit, keeps the play alive, buys some time as his guy frees up. Now the safety comes over. Heath, Heath has to come into coverage. He's late getting over there, and it's a completion. I mean, that's his... Well done as you can do for a young quarterback. 17-yard gain on that one. Another first down. Florida State on the attack here. Booker in the backfield, and that uh, looked like it got crossed up. The handoff took a long time to be made, and Manny Lawson, the defenseman, able to read that and get back into the backfield. Leon Washington, he's out. First he had a hip pointer, then he had the shoulder problem. So Leon Washington not playing here on senior day. So Booker getting all the snaps, and occasionally Anton Smith comes in. But here's Booker again. This is the most work he's gotten in a long, long time. Normally, Washington Booker alternates series. Second down and 11, a loss of a yard on that last play. Out of the shotgun with four receivers. Booker's out there blocking for him, and that one incomplete. It wasn't so much the rush. That was just uh, not the pattern he was looking for. I'll tell you the other thing, too. By NC State making that stop on first down and giving him second down and long, it kind of put, puts the, the onus on, on the offense, and the defense has the advantage. Now it brings up third and long, and I think the defense really has the advantage now. They can turn it loose. And a lot of times they go to man coverage in a situation like this. Well, there are the numbers, 164 yards in the air. This will bring up a third down and 11, two for nine in third down conversions. Florida State, that snap came too quickly, thrown away and almost intercepted. Marcus Hudson was the only receiver, and he's got the wrong color jersey on. Well, and I, I will tell you, Williams has been putting pressure on Weatherford all day long, and he's the one that forced this pass. He was coming in. He was thinking sack. He comes off the edge, the top of your screen, out of the right-hand corner, and here he comes. Here comes number nine. Almost got the sack, and then he almost forced the interception. Look, by him coming off the edge, Weatherford has to jump and throw it high, and there are two white jerseys out there waiting for it. Weatherford trying to figure out what they're doing here. It's a fourth down and 11. The putting unit has not come out. Well, the, the play clock is down to five. They're bringing everybody over. So they're going to have to take a timeout. I'm not sure anybody knew what the down was. You see Weatherford coming over. He did not start to come off the field. It looked like he was ready to. He Good was ball. waiting for another Delayed play. Game. Offense. So it's Number a de 11. delay. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Never did take the timeout, so they'll move it back. They're not worried about that. Yep. Weatherford obviously still learning here. Remember, you're talking about a freshman, redshirt freshman out of Orlando Lakes, Florida, 20 years old. But I'm not sure if that wasn't designed because mm. they thought, all right, we're out of field goal range a little bit for us, so let's move it. We'll take the penalty, give him more punting room. We've had 10 punts combined in this game. And for Hall, who's out there now, he's had five, averaging almost 41 yards a kick. Blackman is back, standing at his own 10-yard line, as Florida State will have to give this one up. Angling to the sideline, that looks like it's going to be uh, 
fair catch and it'll be taken at the 16 yard line. So NC State will take over 22 yard kick first down and 10. Will they go to the air. We have not seen much in the air so far from Marcus Stone his second start in his career. He's back out on the field. Tallahassee Florida and the Hurricanes aren't here. It's beautiful and the sunset magnificent sky and a great football game 10 10 a first down and a 10 Wolf back and they pick up right where they left off trying to run that football. It has not been successful and it wasn't there as Buckley put the head on. Well Marcus Stone started the game the very first play was a bomb but after that he's been running for his life. Here's Nicholson chasing him down and he never really gets comfortable in the pocket. I think both quarterbacks have been uneasy in the pocket today and this is why they're getting a lot of pressure and it's coming from every angle. He is one for seven. Eight yards. That's it. One for seven. So Florida State's not even a, they're not even thinking about the pass anymore. They're trying to load the box and stop the run. You got seven in the box. Over the middle, that'll be completed. And that's what they've got to do near a first down. T.J. Williams, there you go. who did not have a reception last week, yet is their leading receiver with 25. And I believe that's the first reception he's had today. Well, and that, that's a good play, too. You've got to have more of that. He starts on the right side, your tight end. He looks over to the left, comes back, and he hits Williams. And the more you can do that, the more the defense will start to sag and to come out and respect the pass a little bit more. 11-yard gain, that is enough for the first down. Look at this. Look at all those guys. Loaded up. Marcus Stone seeing that. Handoff straight ahead. 30, the other idea is once you get through, there's nobody back there. All the way to the 46-yard line on the carry for Andre Brown. And for Brown, it's either 20 or more or nothing. That's the way he's been running today as uh, he gets 20 on that carry. Well, they spread him out. Look at this. They spread him out here all the way across the field. That means the defense is spread thin. Then they come back in after a completion and they give it up the middle quickly. It's a little bit soft in the middle. One thing this kid has is such a big burst. He's six feet, 235 pounds. Again, he's got that explosive first step and the burst in the secondary. 140 yards on 13 carries today. First down, looking deep down the sideline. That is going to be caught. And down inside the 20-yard line for Hall. Tremaine Hall, who's got 22 receptions on the year, hauls that one in from Stone for 36 yards. Beautiful pass, too. Hey, Marcus, welcome first to Dope Campbell Stadium. This is a good route, gets a little bit of separation at the end, but he never loses sight of the ball, has the advantage. The ball was thrown perfectly. You can almost count the revolutions on the ball. It was so, so well thrown, tight spiral, and just right, on the, right there to the receiver. NC State's only reception in the first half was to Brown out of the backfield. They've already had two of their receivers in this series catch passes. Another first down and 10 and a whistle. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not a whistle, a reverse being run. I think it was a whistle blown. And that will be brought down to about the 11-yard line. Evans coming around from the left side. I apologize. I thought I heard a whistle blown out there. And a couple of the players stopped moving as well, but there was none. Evans on the reverse. They had hoped that was going to take it in. He gains about five on that. Daniel Evans. He's a quarterback as well. He can throw. And I think he was going to. You see he's got it in the throwing position, then just tucks and goes. But Mark Tressman and Chuck Amato right now, they had the little screen. Then they come out and they throw Tremaine Hall, the long pass. Now you come back with a reverse. Now you've got Florida State on its heels a little bit. A second down, short yardage situation. Turn the quarterback behind the running backs. Not much of a game right there. Marcus Stone will not have the first down as he's brought down near the line of scrimmage. And let's check in with John Saunders. John. Gary, Alabama and Mississippi State. 3 nothing game. Opening kickoff second half. Fumbled and Matt Miller takes it 15 yards for the touchdown. Alabama goes up 10 nothing. Then Rudy Griffin with the interception returns 17 yards for a touchdown. They don't have an offensive touchdown, but they lead 17 nothing. Well, that'll just spark the offense on. <laughs> Watching the up guys score the points. You know, that last play, Marcus Stone turned the wrong way. We've seen that a couple times. That's a lack of playing time. Third down and five. This time he comes near side looking. And he takes the hit and is driven out of bounds at the 13-yard line by Nicholson. 
You get hit by Nicholson or Sims, those two linebackers, and you know it. Yeah, but I think Stone got the best of that. Watch, Stone will stone him. Here comes Nicholson now. They're going to meet on the sideline. You tell me who's got the advantage here. Bam! But then as Nicholson who jumps up, gets in his face, gives him a little pat on the side of the head. Friendly pat, no flags. And let's go back and play some more. Well, you take a look at Stone at 6'4", 230. Nicholson, 6'2", 235. Not much difference in size. Look like a little uppercut. The field goal attempt on this fourth down will be a 29-yarder, and a flag goes down. So NC State trying to get the lead back on the field goal as Duraney. They may not have to go that field goal route. Get the call. Maybe against Florida State. Offside defense, number 92. Illegal contact in the neutral zone. That's a first down. Five yard penalty. Wow. Results in a first down. What a big play that is. That's huge. Get the offense back on. Burston still, was the man moving. I'm still thinking of that last play. If you're a coach, I'm not sure you want your quarterback taking on the linebacker that many times. I agree. Need a little help here from the faithful. The defense does of Florida State. Fans on their feet. You see the penalties again we noted they've been a problem for Florida State this year in particular NC State as well first down and goal with the ball at the six yard line and off Brown he'll take it down to the four Brown out of that back position with Buster Davis putting the hit on him Sims keeps losing his helmet I don't know if, uh, if his helmet's not right this is the offsides on the field goal Right in front of the umpire. Well, and AJ says it was NC State that moved first, but we know that's a move point. Already gave the first down. Second down and goal. They will keep Brown deep in that backfield. Couple of tight ends. Timeout. Timeout. Florida State. First charge. Timeout. So they want to adjust the defense to what they saw there as A.J. Nicholson coming off. They want to talk about it here. Obviously a very big drive for NC State with a chance to score as they are in that red zone in a game that is tied at 10-10. The effort by NC State's offense when we come back. Football at ABC Sports brought to you by Chrysler Inspiration Come Standard. City Simplicity Credit Card City Live Richly. And Drive Insurance from Progressive available only through an agent or broker. Relax, just drive. Tallahassee, Florida, the site. And it has been for number nine Florida State a tussle. And now NC State threatening to go back on top. Florida State took the timeout, second down and goal from the four yard line. Brown remains the lone running back, two tight ends. Tries to lob one into the corner. That is incomplete. Good coverage. That's Everybody's terrific. losing their helmet. Well, and a terrific job by Brian Clark, the wide receiver, because he that saved the interception. That ball should have been picked, Clark. and he Work became the defender. Now, it's just a timing pattern. They try to put it over the top. The ball's not high enough. Now, the ball's going to be intercepted, and you see that Brian Clark becomes the defender and just kind of strips it out of there from behind. Boom. Knock that ball away. J.R. Bryant, an all-ACC freshman uh, team member last year, getting his second start. It'll bring a third down and goal with the ball at the four-yard line. Bryant to knock the last one down. Marcus Stone. Now they've got three receivers. Brown in the backfield. Stone under pressure. Touchdown dropped! Wide open and could not hang on to it, Brian Clark. He has four touchdown receptions this year, and that should have been five. Well, you say, what happens? I mean, the ball is thrown perfectly. His job is to catch it, top of the screen. Just runs a skinny post. The ball's thrown perfectly, and it hit his knee before his hands. He went down to get it, didn't extend for it, and hit his knee pad. So the... Florida State defense holds there a 22-yard field goal attempt to Rainey. He's got the leg. It is up and it Rainey is good, and they are good. back on top. So Duraney the will give North NC Carolina State a 13-10 lead. And a fine drive out of which they get three points here in the third. There's what could have been a touchdown pass on that third down play. Clark would like to have that ball back, but not on the bounce. 
NC State 80th in the country with 23 points per game. They're on the board again. 11 plays, 80 yards, 4.15 to get it. How about NC State with three first downs the entire first half? They had four on that drive. Working the football and get that lead back. They originally were up 7 to nothing. Now Florida State will get the football back. Randy's kick's going to be taken back in the end zone. O'Neill chooses to run it out. 15. Ooh. He was just doing the 360 when he got hit. And Marcus Hudson, I'm telling you, what a game Marcus Hudson has played. He has been inspired throughout. You know, this game really should be a 20 to 10 lead by NC State. Watch this. And Brian Clark, number 87, just drops it. I originally thought the knee pad came through between his hands and knocked it loose, but it's not. Just watch his hands. The ball hits right on his hands. He just drops it. That's a lack of concentration. It should have been a touchdown, and they were consoling him on the bench. Wayne Dixon, the wide receivers coach, was over there with his arm around him, whispering in his ear. More of the game to go. Don't want him to get down. That one's going to be uh, thrown away near side. A great coverage right there. No chance. Both the linebackers and the cornerbacks have provided outstanding coverage for NC State. Their defense, this may be one of the better, if not the best game defensively they have played this year. Tell like their leading tackler got over. They change up here, bring in a passing defense. They're just getting their guys on the field on the second down end to 10. Two receivers to the near side. Booker, the lone setback. And Weatherford. He'll take another rush. He gets hit as he throws it. That's going to be out of bounds. Both of these quarterbacks have had to pay a price today trying to throw the football. But, and I want to tell you something. Williams and Lawson, the two defensive ends, they are coming all the time. They came on the blitz again. Look at 91, Manny Lawson. And he gets outside. That's just where Weatherford's going. Weatherford had to throw before he was ready. He missed his last four passes now. He just doesn't look comfortable. His body and his feet aren't aligned. And it will be a third down. Third down and 10. Florida State, two for 10. Third down conversions. Another rush. Steps up to the 20. Trying for the first down. Tried to reach for it and may have gotten it. Tulloch drove him out of bounds. Weatherford knew where he was, and you saw him stick the football out as he was being knocked out of bounds. He needed 10. And the question is, did he get 9 or 10? You know, he got a little defensive yesterday when we were talking to him. We asked him about that 15-yard touchdown run last week, and he says, you know, I was a runner in high school. I can run the football. He wants to be known as an all-around quarterback, and this was a good effort. Not quite. Fourth down, short yardage, but Florida State's pretty deep in their own territory here. He sees the marker and is reaching for it. He thought he had it. See, he rolls over where that sideline official was. One official goes down to the linesman, then comes up and marks it to look behind where his knee hit. Weatherford coming into the game had uh, only 85 yards gained and 84 lost. That's not a lot of net yardage. <laughs> and the punt whistle. You know, you can feel the momentum of this game has changed, and the people in the stands are quiet. Delay of game on the offense, number 48, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Florida State knows they're going to go to the ACC first-ever championship game in Jacksonville. They know that because Boston College lost today, but they don't want to go in on the backside of how they played this year. And the other side of the coin is, for NC State, they got to get the six wins to become bowl eligible, and they've only got three so far on the season as they come in here three and four. So that's what's at stake here in this game for NC State. They would love to knock off Florida State. They've done it before here. There is, this punt's going to be carried all the way back to the 29-yard line and even deeper. He never got a chance to get turned around on the return that time. Pat Watkins back on the cover yet one more time, and let's check in with John Saunders. Here in the singular All-America Player of the Week update, how about Vince Young? 16 of 27, 298 yards, a couple of touchdowns, 53 yards on the ground. Text the word VOTE to 87654 now on your singular phone for your ballot and a chance to win a trip to the national championship. Gary, back to you. And Baylor's not a bad football team. No, they're not. I heard Craig James say that that's Young's Heisman to, to lose now. Whoa. 
First down and 10. I'm not sure about that with Reggie Bush still running. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Gonna run the football a little bit here. They've tried all day and not successfully except for Brown. Brought down by Buster Davis. Davis and Brown have met a number of times. Check him out. wants to try and establish the ground game again after a couple of completions the last time they had the football. Well, the completions are what made that last drive work, and he's got to go back to pass. He's got to have a pass to set up the run. A good gain on that last one of six. Brings up a second down and four. Keep Brown uh, in the backfield again. Brown chugging his way ahead. Kept the legs going, but line of scrimmage is about all he'll get. A.J. Nicholson again moved in on the hit. Well, they're getting Marcus Stone plenty of experience, and he hadn't done anything to hurt him today, but he's got to complete some passes. I mean, look how fast the linebackers are coming and reacting because they don't believe he's going to throw the football. So you got A.J. Nicholson 54 and Ernie Sims 34, and I mean, they're just putting their ears back and coming. He did throw for a couple of completions to different receivers in the last series. 0 for 8 for third down conversions today. They've got a third down and four. Slot it near side. Good pressure. Gets hit. Gets hit again, and down he goes. He'll be sacked. Everybody involved on that one. Florida State line left him no room to run, and the linebackers, with Nicholson leading the charge, got the hit. Well, they were coming with the blitz, and they weren't hiding it either. They were bringing A.J. Nicholson and leaving Sims out in the in coverage. Nicholson had great penetration, didn't make the tackle. Everybody else converged. That's a terrific defensive play. They got great penetration from the get-go. Got a punt it under a big rush. Gets a booming kick. Fair catch called for at the 24-yard line. Deraney, who's an excellent kicker, we told you the... This guy gets them all off, and he did that time somehow. I'm not sure how. <laughs> and he had uh, all kinds of jerseys around him, and he still got off a tremendous kick of 43 yards. You know, Gary, with 5.53 to play in the third, you've got that feeling. It is time now for Drew Weatherford to step up and take charge. I mean, he's got the horses. They've been winning. They've got a lot at stake. They still believe they can go to a BCS. Here's the rush. They got great penetration. You got to lay out when you get that close, but he got it off somehow. What Florida State does not want to happen is to lose another game, go to the championship game and lose it, and then suddenly be out of the BCS look. Quick snap again. That one came quicker than he thought as well. It's going to be completed to the 30. And close to a first down. Again, reaching for it. Again, Weatherford got hit, but he got it away to Rod Owens. Owens, a freshman, had a lot of playing time today. So you take a look back here, 2001. This Wolfpack team, Phillip Rivers, 12 yard, the touchdown pass. Ray Robinson, three yard TD run. Ray Robinson would do it again, 24 yards this time. And NC State won it, 34 to 18. You don't win games in the ACC here in Tallahassee, unless you're the Wolfpack. You only want to do it over the middle. That'll be completed. Not a three or four yard gain on the first down at 10. Weatherford going to Chris Davis. Talked early about Five NC State not backing off. They have their swagger. They know they've been successful against Florida State. Some teams just have your number. And Florida State and Chuck Amato think that they've got Florida State's number, and they always seem to play well against the Seminoles. But we also said in this drive, Drew Weatherford has to step up and do something big, and so far he's done it. A couple of nice plays. Second down and six here. Of course, Amato, 18 years coaching here at Florida State. He may not only have the number, he's got the playbook. Dropping back into the pocket. Look at the open lane. 40, 45. Midfield and driven out of bounds. Weatherford had nobody there as Hudson had to come up to get him a, another first down. Here's your contained guy right here. He looks at him and all of a sudden he says, I'm coming this way because I'm running at him. The pressure comes from the outside. He sees an escape route. He sends a receiver out, which takes the contained man away, opens up that whole side, and he takes advantage of it. He is showing us he's a little bit of a runner. Yeah. You get that much room, and they've given it to him because they don't expect him to run. That brings up a first down at 10. Florida State trying to move into NC State territory here. Five receivers. Again, a little outlet pass, and that's going to be incomplete at midfield. Susie Schuster. 
Well, Gary, Drew told me yesterday he can't stand it when people get so excited about him running the ball. He said, look, I ran the ball all during high school. I was a great athlete. I played varsity and everything, basketball, you name it. So, hey, everybody, I can run the ball. I promise. <laughs> And they really, obviously, this offense for Drew Weatherford is designed for him to pass the football. You know, this is perfect right here. Favorite movie is Braveheart. He's going to be a quarterback. Why not, right? He's good looking enough to be a movie star, too. Working out of the shotgun here. Steps up. It'll be completed. Not much of a gain, though, at the 49-yard line. Moving into NC State territory, Jocelyn Shaw, a sophomore moves in for the reception. Shaw's another player who's uh, played in only six games now and has only seven receptions on the year. We're seeing a lot of different people. Yeah, and that's a good drive. They're getting a lot of different people involved. They're throwing, they're running, even the quarterback is scrambling. This is a good drive. It's kind of opening things up. 13-10, the Wolfpack leading. Two receivers each side this time. Rush put on again by the ends, cutting back into the middle. Ball's intercepted. Up to the 40, back into midfield territory, down the line to the 40-yard line, trying to find open room at the 30, gets hauled down, football goes, flying away. A.J. Davis on the interception, and the only jerseys down there were white. There were two on that pass who had a chance to haul it in. You have to wonder what Drew Weatherford was looking at. He got a little bit of pressure, but he had some protection, and he throws into coverage. Looked like they were playing soft. They had it over the top as well, and A.J. just stepped in. He was playing underneath a car, made the pick, but how about the run on the return? All right, it's man-to-man. -man. He turns. He's in great position. You got the safety coming over to help on car. A.J. makes the pick, but the run afterwards was spectacular. He had about three or four guys take shots at him before he finally went down. A 42-yard return. That is the first turnover we have had in this game. So great field position. Brown again. Look at the turn he makes. And he's inside the 20-yard line. Andre Brown, keep in mind you are looking at a 19-year-old freshman who is getting his first start, and he is playing like a veteran here today. Well, he's the second true freshman to start a tailback this year for the pack. That's how young they are. He actually signed in 2004. He went to Hargrave Military Academy last year, came in. He's a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger than he was as a senior in high school. But here's a high school player of the year in state of North Carolina, scored 47 touchdowns in high school. That's what last he did week. last week in that great effort coming off the bench today. 159 yards, 17 carries. First down and to 10. The fake to Brown. The pitch goes wide and nothing doing on that one. Florida State defense with Daryl Blackman trying to go that way and there was nowhere to run. A.J. Nicholson again moved in to put that initial hit on him. Even the fans starting to believe here. The NC State fans starting to really get after it, believing they can win this thing. Well, that's good defense there. I mean, look at this. You got Nicholson and you got Sims. These guys are always around the football, and if they're not, they're forcing them in to the pursuit, which is coming from the D-line. Nicholson coming into the game, 34 solo tackles and 61 total. Both leading numbers for this Florida State defense. They lost three, 13 to go for the first. And it's caught one-handed down to about the 22-yard line. T.J. Williams. Hello, Sports Center. Oh, my gosh. That's got to be a top 10 right there. T.J. Williams, the leading receiver, looked like a center fielder making a catch over his head with one hand. He's 6'3", 253-pounder, their leading receiver. Say hey, Willie Mays. <laughs> top of your screen, slides out. Watch this one-handed grab. Whoop. Wow. Got, got some big mitts to do that. It'll bring up long yardage situation. 0 for 9 in third down conversions. They, were, they are last in the ACC in that department. Fakes the quick, goes long. That's going to be taken down to the six yard line. And that is John Richter who makes his first catch of the game for a 16-yard first down. Another tight end. So you have Williams, a tight end, make one catch, and then Richter, a graduate student, make the other. This is an older guy, comes into the ball game, has been around the program for a long time, no touchdowns. But as you say, only his fifth reception of the year. So really spreading the ball. 
And there are the numbers on the day up to 70 yards. He had only one completion in the first half. First down and a goal. That'll be carried for a yard or two as they go straight the through the middle. Brown on the carry. As the freshman looking for pay dirt. Two TDs last week. A 65-yard run to open this game up today. He's had uh, three big run plays, and that's what Florida State, any defense fears in college football, do not give up the big play. And another tackle by A.J. Nicholson. He's all over the field right now, playing his heart out, trying to save this season for the Seminoles. Because right now, to be brutally honest, they're on the edge. They're on the brink. In the red zone, coming in 20 out of 24 for the Wolfpack. Stone throws it. Two men there. Touchdown! He had two receivers, and Anthony Hill, the sophomore, hauls it in. How about this? Another tight end. He's their top blocking tight end. They don't expect him to be in the route. But there he is, right of your screen, just kind of slides out. Nobody picks him up. There's a breakdown of the defense. He could have gone either way. He had two guys wide open, and he goes to Anthony Hill. His first touchdown catch of the year. It is 19-10. The extra point attempt by Duraney is up, Durrani and it is good. good. And a really respectable-looking drive by the Wolfpack as they take a 20-10 lead. And it was all set up by the interception. So let's make that our Chrysler passing playbook, and let's show it to you again because this is a pick by A.J. Davis. Here they are up here. All right, let that thing roll. Anthony Davis has man coverage, but he's going to get help over top because they've got the safeties playing free up top and helping out. They slide over. Davis reads it, makes the pick. And how about the return? Watch the number of guys that miss him. One, two, three. Here comes Weatherford. Four. Four guys miss him. Davis still on his feet. Slides by one. Gets a block. There's five. It goes down all the way to the 30-yard line, which set up the touchdown. And it's 20-10 to 10, NC State. Here is your Chrysler passing playbook. Stone now. You see in the first half, one for seven. Second half, five for seven. And 66 yards. And now a touchdown to go with it. So he's coming along. That's his fifth touchdown pass. In this, just his second start of the year. And a stunned crowd here in Tallahassee. Not used to seeing their Florida State team behind anywhere, but certainly not on their home turf. They will get the football back, the Seminoles will, as the kick headed back into the end zone and threw it. And we'll bring it out to the 20. DeRaney boots that one a long way off. The touchdown itself was just a breakdown in coverage. Somehow, nobody comes out and picks up the tight end. Just slides out in the open, and there's not a garnet and gold guy anywhere in sight until it plays over right there. Good pass by Stone. Florida State defense, passing defense. Ranked 17th in the nation, giving up only 182 yards a game, but crossed up on that one. These games are always good to get guys confidence, get them some repetitions in a big-time atmosphere. You can see Stone growing up right in front of us. Yep. Last four games these teams have played have been decided by 10 points or less. And we may very well be headed the same way here. Big rush put on. Weatherford gets away being chased and he'll be taken down. But he does get a couple of yards. Lawson moved in to put the hit on. You see the clock running here in the third. Under 30 seconds to go. We talked about how Weatherford has been reading defenses extremely well. Well, here are the two safeties that he's reading. But what's confusing them is these guys right here are all in man. They're playing five under man coverage with the safety sitting on top. So he's thinking it's zone. But look, stop it there. Everybody is manned up. Here's a man. Here's a man. They're all manned up. Everybody's covered. Five under man. And the safety's up top, and he's reading zone. And the clock ticks down to zero. We have completed three quarters. And uh, can the Wolf Pack do it again? The again being beat this Florida State team here in Tallahassee. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Go, 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 go.
you take a look at the numbers, take a look at the picture. Our great aerial shots today, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse, proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl, Outback Steakhouse. Here, ship the Bloomin' Onion One, providing aerial coverage for sporting events across the country. Could go for some of those Bloomin' Onions right now. Soon, soon. A second down and eight as we start the fourth. With the Wolf Pack trying for the upset against Florida State. Out of the shotgun. Big rush. That's going to be blocked. Whoa. That is Manny Lawson. The right end. I'm telling you, this front four, Bobby Bob may well have been right. It may be the best front four he's faced. Well, I know he's definitely right about 91 and number nine. These two guys are first rounders just waiting for the draft. That play right there is big time. Manny Lawson, 6'6", 245 pounds. Look at the wingspan. When he goes up like that, there's no chance to throw over the top of it. Weatherford is 6'3", and looked like he was at a disadvantage of about eight feet. <laughs> wow. Out of Goldsboro, North Carolina, seniors having a heck of a game here. A third down and eight. Florida State two for 12. Third down conversions into the pocket. They run the ends out of it. And that one is knocked away. Incomplete. You see how excited these guys are. That's Jimmy Sutton, who's not played a lot today, coming in in a passing situation. I can't figure this out. The fans are sitting on their hands. They're dead. Florida State's not showing any life. This ball's drilled, but it's low, and it doesn't look like a great effort to get it. And all of a sudden, the momentum's getting away. Look at Weatherford. He's saying, come on, there was contact. There should have been pass interference. So there's a little bit of life, but not what you expect out of the Seminoles here at Doak Campbell. So it'll bring up yet another punt. Chris Hall. Will punt that one from his 12-yard line. Blackman, who's handled them all, takes it, dangerously so. Trying to find a little room wide. Gets to midfield and gets into Florida State territory. Made something out of nothing on that one. Blackman, nice return. Roger Williams, without the piano, brought him down. 20-10, NC State on top. One car was ranked most appealing entry midsize by J.D. Power and Associates and earned Strategic Vision's Total Quality Award. And it wasn't Toyota or Honda. It was the Pontiac G6 sedan, designed to be one of the best cars in the world. Back at Florida State, where the Seminoles looking for a spark, Xavier Lee, their backup quarterback, looking for some action coming in. Willie Reed, by the way, the senior receiver, out for the day with a concussion. All right, we'll see, Susie, whether or not he gets in. Right now, the Wolfpack with the ball, and uh, Brown on the carry will take it up to the 45-yard line. That was a great shot of Weatherford going up and giving Lee a hug and telling him to go get him. I mean, Weatherford's a starter. He's 19 to 35 right now, but he's only hit three of his last 11 for 17 yards. So he knows he's struggling. He's all for the team, whatever's best for the team. So he goes up and hugs Xavier Lee, who's going into the ballgame as a quarterback. Let me tell you about the spark here for the Seminoles. Four possessions this half three punts and an interception that ended up as a touchdown at the other end. Yeah, we just talked about the fans are not into it. The players need a spark. That's what they're looking for. First, they got to get the football back, though. And NC State's got something to say about that. Brown again on the carry. Cuts back inside. Everything about his play today has been impressive. How about reading that block? He was going to go outside, saw the block going the other way, cut back in. Well, I'll tell you something, too. You've got Kyler Hall, one of the best tacklers out there. He just dove and came out with air. Missed him totally. Anthony Hill with a nice block on it. Great to have you with us here in Tallahassee. As right now, it's a struggle for Florida State. Along with Tim Brandt, Susie Schuster, I'm Gary Thorne. Florida State ranked number nine. But the Wolfpack, they, they are trying to pull the upset here. Browns had 170 yards. In his first start, number 24, this is a third down and one. He'll try for the first down and get that and more. It's not just, Timmy pointed this out earlier, it's not just that he's quick, fast, explosive. He's also big and tough. Oh, yeah, he's a load. He's 6 feet, 235 pounds, and he runs with authority. But he is extremely quick. And the guy is elusive. I mean, he never gives his full body up for a hit. He's like jingle joints. You know, he'll give you that leg and take it back. Jingle joints. Wow, let me write that one down. I stole that. They used to, Ron Sellers was a wide receiver Very here. Good. They called him Jingle Joints. John McKeon with a nice block on that, number 75, as he was pulling on that last play. First down and 10. Big rush. And he's going to get sacked. 
did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Marcus Stone taken down. Alex Boston and Broderick Bunkley moved in on the hit. Show you how Andre Brown has made an impact in this ball game. This is how the game started. His first carry, second play from the line of scrimmage for NC State. He busted big for the touchdown, showing speed and power. A lot of his yards today, not only running away from people, but after contact. He's got about 50 yaks. 50 yards and yaks, yards after the, the contact, and he's just strong, he's elusive, and he's quick. Look at those numbers, and he's a freshman. 248 yards last week, over 178 this week. Adds some more to it to the 30. Makes the turn at the 20, down the sideline, 10, 5, battling a flag down behind the play. This is going to come back for holding. He went out of bounds before the end zone, but the uh, flag, as Timmy says, is way back, and he gets up limping. And he wants to come out, but they've got a stable of backs. You've got Brown as a freshman. you got Blackman as a sophomore. Tony Brown as another freshman. And then Bobby Washington. He injured his ankle in last week's game and uh, may have just re-injured him. Holding on the offense, number 64, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. So Brown goes out of there. It's that left calf that he appears to be pointing to. So fortunately, maybe not that ankle re-injured. Watch his left leg. You just saw it got caught on the turf a little bit, and then he started dragging it a little bit behind him. Look at that. Man. See how he turns it? Even with that, he kept on flying. Second down and 22. Not going to come anywhere near a first down on a play straight up the middle as Davis gets the carry. Jay Davis, a senior, is also a quarterback. And Re Reggie Davis there, the tailback, both of them working out of the backfield in this team. Now that they switch quarterbacks, that is Reggie Davis on the carry, the tailback. And a timeout official timeout taken on the field. You know, Gary, regardless of the outcome of this ball game, the linebackers for Florida State have been sensational. I mean, we see 44, Sam McGrew making a tackle, but A.J. Nicholson, who's a Butkus semifinalist, and Ernie Sims, a Butkus semifinalist, both linebackers, have been all over the field today. So the linebackers as a whole for Florida State have been sensational. And hopefully we'll be able to get up and walk out on his own here. With that break, we will be back. NC State leading it. College football at ABC Sports brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. Hummer, check out the new H3 Hummer like nothing else. Verizon Wireless, there's only one reason to choose a wireless company. It's the network. And Pacific Life, for insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. 82,000 watching here. It's a third down and 16 uh, here in the fourth. NC State on top. Long yardage with a rush put on. Oh, my gosh, at midfield, the reception, but what a shot put on. Marcelo Church. They read that one, and he was in the backfield. When they set it up, they look like you're going to max protect, and they slide down for the screen. Here's the screen, and Church never hesitated. He read the screen as soon as the lineman slid to the right, and he just exploded. Read, react, and punish. Daryl Blackman never had a chance to turn around on that. A loss of six on the reception. So Florida State's going to get the football back. Church with a big hit there. We were talking about Nicholson a few minutes ago. He's got ten tackles tonight. I mean, guy's just flying around defensively. Waiting for the punt here. The officials conferring. No flag or anything was down. So a fourth down and 22. And ready to play. Durrani will be back. Standing at his own 40 when he gets the snap. if he tries to angle this to take this deep averaging 41 yards a kick coming in they're going to go the long count 
No attempt to block. That will be played at the 15 backwards 10. And again, they're going to lose yardage. The coverage by NC State on punts and kickoffs has been outstanding. Dewan Morgan that time moved in to put the hit on. So Florida State's got a long way to go towards the end zone. Xavier Lee, is he ready to come in and try and get a drive going? It sure looks like. We'll find out here in just a minute. We want to remind you tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern ESPN, the Eagles will be battling the Redskins. Some great football to be coming your way. And on Monday, join out Michaels, John Madden, one of the most anticipated games of the season. Colts and the Patriots at 9 Eastern. Some great football coming your way. So Florida State will try and find a little push here. That will be brought up to the 15-yard line. Weatherford, who started, is out. That was Smith on the carry and the new quarterback as we anticipated Xavier Lee the freshman is in well let's let's make this the way it's supposed to be I mean this guy's supposed to come in and give a spark but Weatherford is the leading passer in the ACC he leads the ACC in total offense there is numbers but he missed he was three of his last 11 so he was a little bit shaky so they're looking for a spark out of Xavier Lee who was a great high school player and a top recruit these guys were even in the preseason out of Daytona Beach two yard gain on the last one lead back Throws that one down the sideline. Bump and run coverage. No flag. It's out of bounds. Should have been picked off. Let's get down to Susie Schuster. Susie. Well, Gary, talking about this spark and putting Drew Weatherford on the bench, I have watched Drew grimacing, looking at his left hand. Now, again, don't forget, he banged his left hand last week against Maryland, had been wearing a compression glove all week long, had a big bruise on top of it, and had to wear it everywhere he went this week. When I asked the Florida State guys about that, they said, no, he's fine. It's not injury-related. They're just looking for some kind of spark. There's that compression glove, so it's all right. His hand's okay. They just want to try and find a way to get this thing going. And he better stay loose because he'll be back in the ballgame. Yeah, third down and eight. Big rush put on, and he'll get sacked. Back at the nine-yard line as that was Rolando Moses. You know, another point to be made here is I know talking with Bobby Bowden yesterday, he was telling me that Xavier Lee's mother was here, and, of course, the family wants him to have more playing time. You make the biggest decision of your life and come to Florida State you're highly recruited by every school and then you're sitting behind Weatherford and not playing so maybe Bobby felt a little pressure to get him in the ball game and it was an opportune time because they did need a spark here's the penalty it'll be marked off right personal there. foul 15 yard face mask on the defense number nine 15 yards in the previous spot automatic first down so number they nine, lose Darryl the sacks Lee gets a break on that one and so does Florida State and that'll give them the first down and 10. Here it is again. There's the face mask. You know, the, the thing is about this quarterback switch is the fact that Bobby did this against Miami, too. In the very first game when they needed a spark, he brought in Xavier Lee. Lee has played now in six games, 25 for 43 with one interception and three touchdown passes on the season. Out of the shotgun, somehow gets that over the head of the defender. For a couple of yards uh, on the game, Tullock had moved in there, putting the pressure on. Let's check in with John Saunders. John. Gary, in the Pontiac game-changing performance update, Northwestern trailed Iowa by a couple of touchdowns late. They scored, then recover this onside kick. Reggie McPherson with the reco recovery can't advance it, so they have to march to drive, and Brett Bazinet, touchdown pass with four and two seconds left. Nominate your Pontiac game-changing performance at ESPN.com, keyword Pontiac. Great comeback right there. Here's a second down and seven Lee. Throws it away at midfield. And again, that rush of the NC State defense forcing the play of Xavier Lee. Take a look at our Dr. Pepper ACC update. Obviously, each weekend as it goes by, more and more important. The big win today, North Carolina, Boston College losing. Mm -hmm. Georgia Tech. Beating Wake Forest is expected, and then that big game tonight, Miami, Virginia, 745 ESPN. That may well decide who's going to play Florida State in that game in Jacksonville for the first ACC championship game. At the 30-yard line, gets it off. It is incomplete, again, near midfield. And again, almost picked off by Garland Heath. So I, I understand what you're doing here. I mean, you're looking for that little spark, and you're hoping the kid comes in and lights him up. 
but he's got to be a little bit rusty. The most playing time he's gotten was against Duke, and he did come in and go 10 for 17, but that's Duke. He's going against a very powerful defense in NC State. I mean, this was the number one defense in the country a year ago, and even though they're young, the scheme causes problems. Good defensive coverage again. The cornerbacks and linebackers fine pass coverage today for NC State. And that punt just off by Hall. Blackman is back at his own 25. Blackman has done a tremendous job returning kicks today for NC State. Blackman on kickoff returns is number one in the ACC. Averages only plus five in punt returns today, though. Better than that, 11 yards on that return after a 41-yard kick. Time permitting, the thrifty car rental postgame report with John Craig and Aaron will be coming along. Stay tuned. Highlights and analysis from today's matchups and those results and highlights will be looking ahead as to who's where in the BCS picture as well as championship conference games. Great to have you with us here, Tallahassee. NC State on top, 20 to 10, trying to pull the upset. Brown is in the backfield. First down at 10. Wolfpack have the football. They're on 36-yard line. Brown on the carry. And he'll get about three on that one as he slices across slot tackle. Take a look at the Pacific game summary, the Pacific Life game summary. It was tied at 10 at halftime. Then Durante came in and hit this 22-yard field goal. That made it 13 to 10, and the momentum of the ball game had changed. This was a huge play with Davis making the pick. And how about the return? That set up this to Anthony Hill. Breakdown defensively. There's nobody in the corner. Hill's wide open. And 20 to 10, NC State trying to pull the upset. But keep in mind, Florida State trailed early in the fourth last week against Maryland. It came back and won it. Not over yet. Second down and nine. Fans trying to get involved in this as well. Brown on the carry. Nowhere to go on that one. He will lose yardage. They are king on him. The linebacker, Ernie Sims, moved in to put the hit on. The defensive back of the week in the ACC involved again in heavy traffic. That'll cost him a yard. That clock ticking away, though, is now Florida State. They've got to battle the clock as well as the Wolfpack. NC State has not made many mistakes, although in the last seven games, they've had 20 turnovers, none here today. Third down, two for 12. Third down conversions, third down and 11. And Brown, they're going to run it on a passing play. He won't get the first down. He'll take it up to about the 43-yard line. Andre Brown's got to be wondering, well, this is what it's like. The freshman who prior to last week had 13 carries. Then last week, 32 carries for 248 yards, and he's closing in on those numbers again here in this game. He's got 25 carries and 182 yards. And I tell you, they've got a stable of running backs. They've got four running backs that were parade high school All-Americans. It's just his turn in the backfield right now, and he certainly has taken advantage of his opportunity. He's earned the right to be out there. John Durrani comes in to do the kicking again. Fred Rouse is going to be standing back at his own 20-yard line. Florida State's going to get the football back with plenty of time. Big rush. Gets blocked. And Florida State's going to end up with great field position on this one. And that may be the spark that they needed as Anthony Hollis came charging in, got his arms up, and gave up his body to get the football back for the Seminoles. They've had the opportunity several times to get in close and were unable to get it. This time they came right up the middle and almost got his hand. He ran right up the kicker's front. Almost had the whole leg, not only the ball. Boy, they're getting great pressure. Watch how close he gets to the punter. You didn't have to lay out. Just put his hands. He got in such a great break. He was back there before the ball even got on the foot. Now the surprise here is a quarterback. They are going to keep Lee in. We thought that uh, Bobby Bowden might change that back up again, but Lee is going to get the chance first down and 10. He gets the rush, gets away, almost lost the football, held that loaf of bread out, now tosses downfield, incomplete and almost intercepted. Marcus Hudson for one and Miguel Scott for the other were both standing there with a chance to intercept it. 
Boy, he bought some time. He kept this thing alive, and his receiver was behind the defenders. He just couldn't get it to him. Look at the end zone. Who is that car back there by himself? He puts that thing and puts some air under it and gets it over top of those guys. That's a touchdown. He's 10 yards behind the defenders. Tough for a cornerback's safeties to cover when you have that much time for the receivers to roam around. A second down and a 10. Lee is now one for five since coming in in the last series. Puts that one to the sideline. Nobody near that one. Yeah, and, and they're starting to boo now. They want Weatherford back in there. He's the leading passer in the ACC. Leads the ACC in total offense. You got to get him back in the ball game. And not nothing against Xavier Lee. He's a great player. Was a terrific high school player. He just hasn't had many reps, and so he's got a lot of rust on him. You can't bring him in at the end of the ball game and expect him to be that sharp. It'll be interesting. Bobby Bowden, no matter what happens in this game, is going to have to answer some questions about this. Why is Weatherford standing there? Does this game just not matter anymore? Well, Lee and Weatherford combined are only four of their last 17. And that is not a knock on Xavier Lee. Looking down the middle. Again, almost intercepted. Listen to this place erupt down in booze. I mean, the last two passes haven't even been close to a receiver. And he had guys open on every one of those plays. He had guys open on all three of those plays, including Carr, who was behind everybody in the end zone. He's, he's got a guy out to his right that's wide open in the flats. Then he decides to throw underneath, and there's an open receiver. I mean, Rouse was all alone. A long field goal here of 48 yards. Long enough. It is up, and uh, it is good. Well, that'll at least give them something out of that drive after that recovery was made. Says Mesha. Field goals now is 11 out of 15. That came after the blocked punt. And they salvaged the three points on his field goal. Yeah, those three points are all on the special teams because the offense didn't do anything. So they've uh, cut it down to 20 to 13. Tomorrow, join ABC Sports in Atlanta for live final round action. The Tour Championship presented by Coca-Cola. The coverage begins at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Moves to ABC at 1 o'clock Eastern. All coming up tomorrow. Well, we've got a finish for you here. And what a ball game by the freshman. Take a look at the IBM Star Watch. And you've got to go look at the freshman running back because Andre Brown today has been spectacular. He got the game going for NC State right out of the blocks with a long touchdown run. He has 25 carries, 182 yards. He's got that touchdown that was the second play of the first offensive series for NC State. This after his performance of last week where he ran for 248 yards against Southern Mississippi. That's our Star Watch, IBM Star Watch player of the game. Going to be hearing a lot from him along the way. Now Weatherford indeed has got the helmet on and is warming up. Well, maybe he'll be back in. First points of the half for Florida State coming on that field goal. By the way, that was not Sismasia's longest. That was a 48-yarder. He's picked another one this year, 49 yards. This is going to be taken at the six by Blackman. Blackman wants to turn that far corner. Can't. Cuts back in and will not get to the 20-yard line. About the 17-yard line. And now can the Wolfpack take possession for a while? Well, we talked about NC State not making any many mistakes here tonight. As a matter of fact, in the last seven games, we said they had 20 turnovers. Well, just then, they have a punt blocked, and now all the pressure is back on Marcus Stone, the young guy who has his second start here in this ball game. Seven out of 15 after having just one completion in the first half. And he's shown an ability to run the football a bit more. First quarter, he didn't want to. He's had to because he's had so much open space. NC State get the first down and the 10. Stone. Great protection over the middle complete 30 yard line and up to the 31 stone took plenty of time in finding Lamarck Barrett for a 13 yard gain that's Barrett's first reception split in that's a big time throw too. you talk about a guy and his feet and his body being aligned for a big time throw the route wasn't that dip difficult just a little quick in the ball was perfect Barrett who has 15 receptions on the year. Nicholson, he cut right in front of him and got the angle. Clock ticking here in the fourth. Three receivers to the near side. 
On the flip to Brown, turns the end, boom, and then pays for it. He'll be taken down for a loss. They had a couple of blockers out in front, but Buster Davis and Sims both broke through. Talk about the linebackers all day long, but they just fly to the football. There could have been a holding right there, but look at Buster Davis, number seven, coming over. Sims has had a big night as well. Here comes Davis, number seven, flying to the football and just putting an exclamation point to it at the end. A lot of carries for Brown here in this game. He has become their primary runner, primary offensive weapon, in fact, in this his first start and second big game that he's played in, the first being last week. They lost three on that. Second down and 13. That's going to be completed, but it would take it a fine run. They just get back to the original line of scrimmage. Barrett again on the reception. Ernie Sims was there in the coverage. Yeah, but the play is made by number 34, Ernie Sims. Davis finished it off. Those two guys again run into the football, and it looks like Ernie Sims is a little bit hurt. But this is an outside linebacker. Watch 34. Top of the screen. Look at him run, break down, force the runner to make a move, and hang on. I mean, that is a great play by a guy who's a linebacker that runs 4-4, got over, stayed under control to make that play. He's got a bad left wing right now. Kind of hanging it down there, isn't he? Third down and nine. Two for 13. Third down conversions. The rush put on. A little running room, but not enough. 35-yard line. That's where Stone is taken down. Andre Flewellen moved in. It's going to be three and out. And again, Sims putting the pressure on. And with the clock running, closing in on three minutes to go, Florida State will get the football back. Yeah, and here at Doe Campbell, it's like chum to a shark. 34 may have a bad wing, but look at him run to the football to help finish that playoff. Ernie Sims is a big-time football player, and he's going to play at the next level with great success. But will be coming. Or about the 24-yard line when he kicks it. Rouse is back. Deraney, it's blocked! At the 20-yard line, 10. And out of bounds at the 5. Lawrence Timmons. The second blocked punt. The first one they got a field goal on. And again, Marcelo Church is the man who came in and got the body in front of it. Here he is right here. These guys are coming like this hard, but here's your guy, and he's going to make the block. They are just so quick. The blocker stepped out. He went inside and lays out to make this block. The special teams have turned this ball game around. Two block punts. They got a field goal on the last one. Lorenzo Booker is in there in the backfield. They take it on the five yard line. Weatherford trips and falls. Weatherford back in the ball game took the snap and stumbled without being hit. That's a quarterback's nightmare. I'm wondering if he got his feet tangled with the lineman. Looks like he just stumbled, turning to, to go back for his drop. Did not look like he caught anybody's no. foot. So now all the way back to the 12-yard line, a loss of seven. Second down and goal. Much better first half passing than second, but he can make up for it. A whistle. A whistle on the play before the snap. Timeout. North Carolina. So, or, or NC State. Yeah. NC State taking a very late timeout just before the snap. May not have had the players in there they wanted for the pass coverage because they had Greg Carr, that tall freshman receiver in there, and I don't think they had the uh, nickel backs in there. They wanted the double team number 89. There's no question Chuck Amato against his old team. He spent 18 years here as an assistant, 14 of those years 
He had the office right next to Bobby Bowden's, and you see the success he's had the last four years. He's the only team in the ACC to have beaten them three times, and they've split these four times. Some teams just have the other team's number. These games are invariably close between Florida State and NC State. In the series, Florida State leads at 18 to 7. They won last year 17 to 10. Series Please again. correct the scoreboard. There should be two timeouts left for North Carolina State, two timeouts left for Florida State. So a little housekeeping in the timeouts left, but Chuck Amato was telling us the story this week. The first time he beat Bobby, his old friend, clock struck zero. He was going up the midfield to shake his hand. He was thinking, what am I going to say to him? He got out. Bobby Bowden said, hey, congratulations. Go celebrate with your kids. And he did. And he'd love to be able to do it again here. Second down and goal. Keep an eye wide right. Greg Carr. Here's he your like, guy. He makes likes to make those leaping catches in the end zone. Weatherford working out of the gun, looking the other way. It is intercepted at the goal line. Running right along the goal line, A.J. Davis. Davis comes out with it finally, and he'll be swept down at about the three-yard line. Well, I don't understand that at all. Drew Weatherford threw into coverage. The second interception by NC State off Weatherford today. Carr is up to his right. Instead, he looks to his left and throws into coverage. He had the safety Morgan over top, the cornerback right there, Davis, with his second interception of the day underneath, and he threw right into it. He's looking over that way. He's looking over that way. He leads him that way and throws right to him. Florida State getting into the end zone today has been a quagmire for them from working out of the red zone. Two interceptions, A.J. Davis. Second one, and again, Florida State can't get in, and now just a minute 50 left to go on the clock. 2013, Florida State with a couple of timeouts to work with. Backed up. Brown will try and run it out. He's not going to go far. Forward motion, of course, is where the ball will be spotted. And out of the backfield that time, they have Reggie Davis on the carry. Well, and you've got a passer who's not very efficient passing the ball, still doesn't feel comfortable, especially in the end zone. You know Andre Brown's going to be the guy carrying the ball or whoever's in a tailback. Time permitting our thrifty car rental postgame report. John Craig and Aaron will have it. Stay tuned for the highlights and analyses of today's games. What an ending here. Second down and 11. Clock is running. This ball game right now is in the hands of Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, and his defense. Not much room to run here, and the quarterback on the dive will move it up maybe a yard or less. Got to take a timeout here. Just trying to get a little room. They are sick. Timeout. Florida State. There it is. Second charge timeout. The second timeout Florida State has had, so they've got one remaining, and there is Mickey Andrews. Please reset the game clock to 102. 102 on the game clock. It was down to a minute, so they put the two seconds back up. I'm surprised they didn't have his players saying call timeout as soon as the whistle blows because they let about 15 seconds go off the clock. Now, they may have to use that timeout again, and the offense is going to have to work with the sidelines because they won't have those timeouts remaining. So both teams will gather around, and Marcus Stone... We'll get his plays from the sideline to try and put up a little room. Weatherford, it has been a long day for this young quarterback who came in with tremendous numbers in total offense, touchdowns, and passing. And today, a couple of interceptions. 19 out of 36, 181 yards. The one touchdown and two interceptions. Now you want to think that if they make the stop on this next play, Florida State, all right, you've blocked two punts, so if you're NC State, you've got to be thinking, all right, I'm taking the safety, bring my guy out to the 20, and I'm going to give him a free kick because you've had two blocked. That's what's being talked about over there with the coaches making these decisions. Bobby Bowden, he's got the headset on right now. Third down and 11. Two for 14 third down conversions. But here it's just don't give up the football right the defense has to make a stop if you're Florida State see what they call here again just trying to move straight ahead and the defense knew it you see immediately 
The Florida State timeout. players signaling for the last State. timeout. Third and last charge timeout. So if I'm NC State and I've had my last two punts blocked out, I've got to be thinking, all right, we're taking this one out of the back of the end zone. We're giving them two points, but we're moving it out to the, the 20 for the free kick. Here's the block. That's the first one. And that wasn't even close. He didn't even have to lay out for it. Then Church with the block. They came, they overloaded the right side, and this took it down inside the 10. And out of that, they got three points. And you do not want to give them that opportunity again. No. An interception cost them the last time, and then a field goal the first time on a block punt. Now again, the discussion about what Timmy's talking about here going on uh, with Marcus Stone as to how they're going to play this. There's John DeRaney, their putter coming out. He's got no room to kick here. He will be at the very back of the end zone. Florida State has already blocked two here in the second half. We're down to 58 seconds left to go in the fourth with NC State vying for the upset 20 to 13. Just take the safety. See if he takes the safety. Garaney, a veteran back there, junior kicker. Yep. He's going to run it to the corner. Wait and step out of bounds. Took as much time as he could get off the clock. And then stepped out of bounds, killed nine seconds, gave up two points, but get some room. A pretty good move right there. And now Florida State will get it back to its offense, probably with about 45 or 40 seconds left. And they'll have no timeouts to work with. They get their final opportunity to gather around here on the change of possession without the timeout. And Weatherford already knows what the scheme's going to be to try and get them the touchdown which at this point obviously would give them a lead in this game with it being 20 to 15 picking up the two points off that safety the and two pretty good coaches there's no question yeah. about that and this has been a chess game and that's very smart I mean they didn't waste any time making those calls As we um, mentioned earlier these uh, with Chuck Amato being here 18 years, they're very good friends. He and Bobby Bowden, they talk all the time, every week. Amato views Bowden as his mentor and, at, you know, asks everything and anything of Bobby Bowden about anything he wants to know about coaching. Very close. So they got two guys who know how the other thinks working against one another here in this game. Tell you what you don't want, Gary. You don't want a lot of running around. If you don't have a lane, you don't want to be jitterbugging and running back and forth across the field and eating the clock. All right, Duraney's going to do the kicking. Talking about what they're going to do. Rouse is number one out there. He's standing back there. And Kenny O'Neill, number four. They are back at their own uh, about the 15 yard line as they wait for this kick after the safety. Duraney punching that one. It'll be uh, played at the 23 yard line. Fred Rouse. Fred Rouse indeed comes right straight up the field and gets it to the 44 yard line. So they've got 47 seconds to work with. First downs will stop the clock. Sidelines will stop the clock. No timeouts left. They practice this every single day at the end of practice. Weatherford started the game, came out for just two series here in the fourth quarter. There you see the numbers, first and second half, the one TD, the two interceptions have come here in the second half. They've got three down linemen. Three receivers on the right side. Weatherford just gets it through the defender, and it's dropped. That is not his fault. That ball was catchable, and Chris Davis could not hang on. That's unbelievable. That ball was thrown perfectly. And I think Davis was looking to see where the defenders are rather than looking the ball in. He was already looking for his next move. Right there, his head swerved. See it just a little bit? He was looking over at number one, Marcus Hudson. He came off the ball just for that instant. It does stop the clock. 41 seconds remaining. Second down and 10. Weatherford again, two receivers each way. In the pocket, doesn't see the hit, and he's sacked. Manny Lawson again. He had already gone by him, and he circled back. Critical mistake. The clock's still running down to 28, 27. He's got to get up and just clock play it. They get everybody on side. Third down and 11. Weatherford back again. Throwing down the middle. That's going to be intercepted. Ball game is going to be over. Carried back. Garland Heath 
Heath down the sideline, slips and falls on the Wolf Pack, jumping up and down on the far sideline as they're going to do it again. They are the only team in the ACC to beat Florida State here in Tallahassee. They are going to do it again with nine seconds left on the clock. It's the fourth time he's beaten Bobby Bowden. You know, Drew Weatherford is just a freshman. And this is uncharacteristic of him, but he never looked comfortable in the pocket today. There, there was a sense of urgency. He was really trying to hurry, and a smart play at the end just to get down and let the clock go. Don't step out of bounds here. Boy, he makes the pick. Now watch this. This is a smart play. He sees, all right, I'm going to be tackled, and he gets down. Three interceptions all coming in the second half against Drew Weatherford. A.J. Davis had two. Heath gets that one. And a very big win for the Wolfpack as they come in here again and pull an upset. And Bobby Bowden's team is going to move on to the ACC first ever championship game. But not the way he wanted to do it, though. Not the way he wanted to do it. And this will take him, I believe, out of BCS bowl contention. The second half unless, offense. Unless he wins that championship That's game. right. 74 total yards for Florida State and three turnovers in the second half. 74 total yards. So they will go to the championship game, and their only way to get to the BCS now is to win that championship game. They've got to win that one. And there's the touchdown uh, to keep the clock going. 20 to 15. NC State upsets Florida State here in Tallahassee in probably the best football game that they have played this year. Without a doubt. And Marcus Stone give him a lot of credit. He was only one for seven in the first half, but came out, loosened the bump, did a couple of passes, had four first downs in the opening drive of the second half and moved. He's talking about Brown. Hey, Andre! He wants to meet you now. That's who he's talking about. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Andre Brown, 26 rushes, 179 yards and a TD. A.J. Nicholson, tremendous work for the Seminoles, the linebacker at 13 tackles. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Let's get out to Susie. All right, thanks very much. Coach Amato, what does this win mean to you right now in the stadium you spent 18 years in? Well... It's not as as tough as it was the first time I, we were on I mean, that day. I just cried like a baby. But to, the way these these young men over here with the white shirts played, if we'd have lost that through two block punts, it would have been you know because they played their, their brains out. But it, it's just a great win for the North Carolina State nation, for the North Carolina State football team, and and the whole Dagon program. How about this young freshman to your right, Andre Brown? Well, he's something. He's something, and he's only 12 years old. He hasn't stopped growing yet, believe me. 12 years old, I, I would have yeah. said, said 13. He, yeah. Coach, what about your talk with Bobby Bowden after the game? He's your mentor. He's been so close to you for so long. What did you guys say? Uh, he just, as usual, he always says the right thing, and he said, you know, Chuck, I, I didn't think you could do it. I knew it would be tough. He said, but he says, congratulations. It was a great, great job, and tell your staff, and your players, they did a great job. Coach, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Susie, thanks very much. Well, what a win for them as they come away with a victory. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Aerial coverage today. Thank you guys upstairs. Our studio host closing provided by Everett Hall Designs. Tomorrow night, Eagles Redskins, ESPN. Monday night football, Colts and Patriots. Great games coming your way. Again, our final score. NC State wins it 20 to 15 over Florida State. Just Florida State's second loss of the year. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. For Tim Brandt, Susie Schuster, and all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and so long from Tallahassee.